live. Oh, we are live. Okay, we're live. Hey, everybody, and welcome. This is the Apostate Prophet. How is everybody doing? We are right now streaming simultaneously on my channel, Apostate Prophet, and also on Harris Sultan's channel. So uh, wherever you are, you should be getting this same stream. And I'm acting like I'm the boss because there is, uh, you know, it I, I, I have been mainstream. Yeah, it is my stream yard. So uh, <laughs> Harris is, is practically a guest. So um, we want to do have access. I do have have access if you if you want to see look i just did this hey see i'm moving <laughs> <it>. <laughs> uh so we are here because uh some very nice things happened we got surprised by uh disappointed actually many people have been telling me that uh i have been doing this whole youtube thing for like two three years or so and some guy called Daniel Kikichu came along and did more harm more damage to islam than i ever did it's like dude i'm trying so hard i'm putting so much effort into this stuff and then he comes here says a few words and everybody hates islam much more now and it's like i'm jealous you know daniel <laughs> that's why i've labeled him daniel own goal hakikachu uh, <laughs> it's like people are expecting me to reinvent the wheel it's like when someone is scoring his own goals do have you ever seen like the footballer goes to his side and, and start celebrating no it's like you yeah. just let them score their own goal <laughs> that's just the way it is it's it's um uh yeah it, it, it's anyway I, I reckon there's a lot there's loads to talk about what he yeah. where uh, he went wrong and he actually and and i want to uh, just just straight off the bat i want to say that stop saying that hakikachu is actually brutally honest he's not and i'll show you how he actually lies just like we know Muhammad Hijab lies. We know that he makes up translations as he goes along. Um, but Hakikachu, with his studies, and this is why I never paid any attention. Maybe I, I think I should have paid more attention to the studies to actually verify them on the spot. I knew that, you know, like he might have interpreted it in, in his own ways, but they're actually false studies. So we haven't, haven't even seen those studies. So, um, which obviously, this is the reason why one should never lie, because you if you don't know the answer you can stay quiet you don't know the answer but when you lie you get caught out like muhammad hijab got caught out after lying and this is how he got caught out about lying as well so we'll go through most of his claims but i also i just want to say guys um to ap's i mean obviously it's being shown on my channel and uh, ap's channel as well i think my i've only got 60 people watching on my channel you've got most of the audience so please if you can do subscribe my channel as well yeah. Um, I have the video editor who is going to be collecting all the all these clips and putting it up. We've just put up one clip where he was defending wife beating. It's like a 10 minute clip. So my response is in there as well. And the crickets from the other side. So so they come down and they try to tell you as though he gave the answer. I've given the answer as though right or wrong doesn't matter. It's just because he's given the answer. That's it. So he he was the, some of the points were so absurd that you don't even need they, they don't even need to be refuted. But a lot of uh, his arguments were actually refuted as well. So uh, to uh, but because the format of the debate is like he's he's going on for like five minutes and then I have to talk uh, five minutes in, in return and there's like four topics to cover. So my point you might not hear about that answer seven or eight minutes later. Um, so people forget about that that the response the response has been given. Um, so that's why um, I'll be putting up those clips from that where uh, I've responded to them as well and all the riffraff and all the other things will be gone. So uh, please do uh, do subscribe to my channel. Yeah, go subscribe to Harris Sultan's channel. He's been doing uh, some great stuff recently. And this whole uh, debate that happened was also something uh, something very good on his part. I want to say a few words about that that whole thing. Uh, now, earlier, this, uh, the, earlier today, Daniel Kikuchu apparently went live on a live stream that he uh, greatly announced and tried to you know spread for days now since the debate. And at the beginning of it, I just listened to a few minutes of it. He, I heard him say these very ridiculous things like, uh, like people are saying, Saying Harris Sultan was not prepared, but I don't think so. I think Harris Sultan was actually completely prepared. Uh, as it seems, the all the Murtads, the ex-Muslims, uh, Harris Sultan, and especially Apostate Prophet and all the others, they prepared for a long time for this. They sat together and prepared for weeks uh, their arguments and they wrote.
wrote a script and then Harry Sultan just came and uh, he didn't make any sense. That That's what he said, you know, and, and he's trying to uh, manipulate the opinion of the audience and trying to make it look like he's this big, great guy and we are afraid of him and we totally lost and all that. I mean, we just had a stream just a few days before the debate in which Harris, Harris here uh, openly said, I didn't even prepare anything, you know, I just, <laughs> I, didn't. I, I just want to, I just want to go there and let him speak and expose himself. I'm not here to actually uh, refute him and to debate with him. And that's actually what happened. You know, the debate was mainly just uh, Harris uh, poking, uh, you know, certain points, making fun and, uh, and Daniel basically digging his own grave. I mean, I just published four videos so far, little excerpts that all make everybody like Islam much less than before. I mean, I want to ask you one simple question. The debate between Daniel Hikikichu and Harris Sultan happened. Supposedly, Daniel Hikikichu is supposed to make people like Islam more. But what do you guys think is the outcome of that, of this debate? Do you think as a result of this debate, as a result of everything that came out of that, as a result of everything that we are seeing from that debate, do people like Islam more yeah. or do people like Islam even less? because of Daniel Hikichu. I really want to genuinely ask this question to not only the uh, non-Muslims and ex-Muslims and all the others, I want to ask this question especially to Muslims. Moderate to, Muslims. Yeah. Moderate Muslims. No, no, yeah. Not Hikichu fanboys. They, 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 they think, yeah, that's fine. Wife beating, sex slavery, everything. Perfect. <laughs> and, 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 and this is what I said in, the, in, in my opening statement or one of the monologues as well. And I said the same thing. I said, let's just see how many people after this uh, say, wow, Hakikachu, you've given us these mind boggling arguments. La 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 la, Muhammad Rasulullah, I have now converted <laughs> to Islam. Let's just see. I'm actually getting, let me show you the, uh, let, let me show you my screen where I'm getting all the messages from, from atheists, Christians, Shias, you know, like Hindus who are all saying that, Harris, you've let us down and. We've turned into Muslims. <laughs> my, my inbox is literally empty. <laughs> there's, there's I mean, nothing. You, had to, you had to be on the live stream. I was live there. You know, I, I made a tons of tons of super chats just to ask uh, Daniel a lot of questions. You had to be there and you had to check the live chat as the debate was happening. Whenever he started giving a ridiculous answer to something like, I don't know, child marriage, for, especially the, the whole part about child marriage, when he started justifying child marriage, you know, he could have just asked uh, answered the question with a yes or a no he thinks he has to explain it more deeply to you know not appear like a like a bozo but with his long deep explanation justifying child marriage it gets even worse the responses in the live chat in the, on that stream from non-muslims especially were like what the hell what the fuck what is, what's going on this is disgusting ooh why is this guy being hosted on here you know and this is the general sentiment that people have right yeah. now and they think those radical islamists those islamists and his fans think oh we are just being emotional you know uh, ooh is not an argument well you idiots why do you think people react this way to somebody sitting there and justifying uh, the marriage between hypothetically a 55 year old and a six year old or a nine year old. Why do you guys think uh, people react with disgust to that? Because we're talking about little children, little children being used for uh, reproduction for sexual purposes turning into baby turned into baby making machines we are we are seeing somebody sit there some weird looking guy sit there and justify that with horrible arguments that go against everything that we have learned about child development about psychology about science over the last centuries we have adopted a disgust for child marriage and for child rape for a reason because it is so horrible because it is so harmful because we were all children because we make children and if we abuse those children those children will become adults who will be harmed and so on this is not an emotional response this is simply a response coming from a point of common sense to some barbaric guy who tells us that it's completely fine to have uh, sexual intercourse with a little girl as soon as she has her period where she is not even developed enough remotely to uh, to 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 bear children or to have sex even but yeah but but did you uh, so let's just try to steel man his position so you know like they don't i don't care about them because uh, like his fanboys or cheerleaders because they're just gonna i i said that they're gonna claim that we we won anyway they, he was turning he was literally turning red when i was uh, some of the jokes were actually harmless and, and i actually held back 
you know, like, I, you know, like I was like, okay, let's just have a bit of fun with it. You know, there, there was a point when I said something like, uh, let's talk about the elephant in the room. And then, then in my mind, it just came out, hey, Daniel, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> just, but, but, you know, but, but I held back. I was like, okay, maybe, you know, he's turning red. He might have a, a you know, like I, I don't want him to have a blood pressure shoot through the roof. So he's, so let's steal man's position. So his whole argument, so instead of Sharia talking about all the other issues that we just pushed him, which he avoided a lot. And then when you pushed him even more at the end, he got so angry that he actually yelled at the moderator. And so, so I he turned that. the whole, the whole Sharia element for him. So this is, this was the central argument. Sharia protects family system and family system increases fertility rate. So in this context, obviously chopping off hand, hands of thieves, that, that's got nothing to do with family system. So he's talking about women being subjugated, as I brought up a live call from his own Muslim follower who asked him, what about this? Why uh, we don't, we Muslims don't treat women like you do. Why? And then he turned around and he said, do you want, uh, don't you want your wife to be obedient? So that's the context that because Sharia enables women to be subjugated. And as a result, your fertility rate goes up. So that was his argument. Yeah. So I'm not misrepresenting him or anything. Yeah. And I said to that, I said, there's clearly other factors involved, such as economic prosperity, which he didn't respond to it. Not a single word he said to it. So again, he was like, I've given you studies. I've given you studies. And obviously, I can't verify any of those studies. So let's have a look what the actual studies are, what, what, what fertility rate has to do with it. This is, look at this relationship between fertility and income. So as your, your income, can you see it? Can you guys see it? As your GDP income goes up, your fertility rate goes down. And look how far down it is. His other argument was with the extension of not, not only the fact that he's saying that um, your uh, uh, Sharia in boosts fertility rate, but he's saying human rights, on the other hand, <laughs> are extremists. So there are some lots of golden moments in there. So he said human rights actually make fertility rate go down so let's have a look at some of those as well so which countries have um i, I just have to say something he said uh he said that if you wait for too long and if you don't practice child marriage then uh people will go extinct because they will not be able to make enough babies i mean are you oh, yeah. dumb man <laughs> he, so yeah we'll come to that this debate was actually fertility yeah, rate yeah. boosting and yeah. and his whole argument was again you can go through the whole debate and listen to the painful, painful points that he was making, but there's no misrepresentation. He's saying human rights make fertility rate go down, Sharia make it go up. So let's have a, I just showed you that it has st strong correlation. There's a study that I just tweeted about that. So guys, please follow me on uh, Twitter as well. Um, the uh, So GDP rate goes up, fertility rate goes down. This is a no, I just shared that with you. This, uh, the link is in on, on my Twitter. But let's have a look about the countries that do have Sharia. Let's have a look at those ones. What about, look at this. This is um, Qatar, 1.87. Qatar has got like 70 or 80% Sharia law. Uh, it, it, it has Sharia practices. Uh, let's have a look at other one. Uh, let's have a look at he will he will condemn Qatar as uh, not a real Islamic. No, yeah, uh, no, 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 that's fine. I'll come to that. So, so basically, they're saying it's not a real Islamic because they've got king, kingship there. So, so if we somehow have all the elements of Sharia that Qatar does have it and replace the king with the Khalifa, fertility rate is going to go up. If, in other words, that's their argument. Obviously, that's bullshit. So, have a look at Saudi Arabia again. Saudi Arabia, they would say it's not a uh, good example, but have a look as GDP goes up. This goes down and down and down. And look, it's the same trend with everywhere. Qatar is going down from 6.97 down to um, 1.87. UAE from 6.93 down to 1.41. Yes, UAE is modernizing as well. But still, uh, Saudi Arabia has uh, Sharia laws. It's a very misogynist country. All of those things. <coughs> MBS is trying to change that. What happened there? Now, let's have a look at another country. Now, let's have a look at... Uh, a country like Pakistan, it's been steady for a very long time, and now it started falling down, and it's still very high, 3.51, but you can't take credit for it because, guess what? Pakistan doesn't even have Sharia law. Pakistan probably only has 10 or 15% of Sharia law, not even 
And, and that's very basic rudimentary Sharia law. There's no amputations. There's no flogging. There's no stoning. Um, uh, uh, yes, you can go to prison for like three months or something for adultery or something like that. So Pakistan doesn't even have Sharia law. In, in, but Pakistan is a poor country, unlike Qatar or Saudi Arabia or UAE. So his whole argument that it's got to do with family system which is enabled by sharia that increases fertility rate that's just false i just showed you the studies and 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 this is the actual study that says um it it goes up because of the the link between fertility and income is I think it, th th this is this is a fact. I uh, want to uh, unashamedly say that I learned this in sociology 101 in you know in my in my college class that uh, it is it is a known fact in anthropology and sociology and current human uh, development and research that if you um, you know when when the social status of a of of a people goes up when the financial status the well-being goes up the fertility rates go down because the fertility rates are high under uh less developed people for certain specific reasons including sickness including you know uh the 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 uncertainty when you have wealth your life becomes more organized and uh societies have a more organized planned way of creating a family and no matter what religion no matter what culture you are in there is a difference in how the fertility rates decrease but the fertility rates will eventually decrease they will eventually go down the high highest fertility rates among cultures when they become uh, uh, more advanced, more wealthy, more comfortable will start going down. This is a very well-known fact. Uh, Daniel Kikuchu likes to cite uh, studies, he likes to cite classes, he likes to cite books. This is something that you can find in every basic sociology book, uh, you know, in every basic sociology 101 book. This is something that you can find in, he gives some uh, sources of books that are, that, that like two people read, I mean, uh, read The Better Angels of Our Nature. It's, it's a huge mm. book. I read it by Steven Pinker. Of course, he might dismiss Steven Pinker as somebody who uh, he, you cannot trust. But uh, he explains the development over time very well and demonstrates very clearly how humans have, uh, you know, as much as they go toward more wealth, more comfort and more peace, the fertility rates also thereby uh, decrease immensely, dramatically. And this is a norm. This is universal in the world. Yeah. And um, so so the whole argument on fertility, I, I, I don't know if you have to say more on that, because uh, obviously more tribal or a backward a society is. And if you go, um, uh, they, they've got less um, uh, medical facilities available. Back in the day, people also used to make a lot of a lot of babies. Only one or two out of five will survive to adulthood. Um, you know, I, I don't know, Stalin had like four brothers or something. They all died, only he survived. And Hitler had similar kind of story as well. So uh, uh, the, this people used to die. They, they didn't used to go. And that was like an insurance policy. So now, even as I said, and I pointed that out, even Muslims are not making enough babies be, uh, as the uh, as the income goes up, as women get more educated, etc. So it, it's a it's a known problem but again and when i asked him did you notice how he dodged the question when i said okay so if we just let it go unchecked if we keep the fertility rate go up like the way you're going what is the ideal size of uh, the human population is it 9 billion 10 billion he didn't answer he said oh all i'm saying is that it supports family system well hang on so if family system is going to destroy the planet what good is that what, uh, uh, where's your fertility <laughs> argument then? And when I asked him, I said, I said, when, okay, so if we hit 10 billion, because this is the ultimate uh, extreme, a lot of forecasters are saying that by the end of the century, we might hit 10 billion, but everywhere all around the planet, the, it's going to plateau and it's going to start decreasing after that. So he goes, oh, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll, uh, we'll sit with him arms at that point and then we'll work out a solution. Okay, so we should leave the fate of the planet in the hands of people who dress like you, <laughs> you know. So he, he, he didn't he didn't give any answer to that, and um, and yet here they are. They think that oh, these are mind boggling answers. Harris, you know what you know what me what really amazes me. Um, the, the entire time when he tries to argue for Islam, he did the same thing in, in the debate with you. He did the same thing in our uh, discussion with me. He tries to argue from. Um, 
you know, with a focus on pragmatism, like what is better for humans, what is better for the future, and this and that. And of course, uh, ironically, he only brings points that are not very pragmatic, that are not very good for our uh, well-being. But but wait a minute, I, I I try to ask this in our discussion as well. Why in the world does he try to focus on pragmatism the entire time? What is it to him? What is it to Islam? What is pragmatic for this indefinite future of humans? You know, what does it matter if humans will uh, might go extinct under certain uh, ridiculous circumstances that he imagines? What is all that to him? He's supposed to argue for Islam. The Islamic life, the Islamic world, the Islamic truth, and where we live on a planet only temporarily just to obey Allah, to do nothing else, just to make a living, to pray and to obey Allah, so that we can uh, then go to heaven and live our eternal lives there. According to the Quran itself, the life here on earth is nothing but play. You know, th th that's what it is. But Daniel Hikikichu tries to appeal to the emotions of people in a very terrible way. He doesn't, uh, you know, succeed with that at all by constantly arguing things like, well, if we don't do child marriage, then we might go extinct. If we don't uh, control women, then, you know, we will not have a strong patriarchal, patriarchal society. If we do this and this, then fertility rates will sink. Well, okay, so what is it to you? He said to me before as well, uh, if we go on with this, if we proceed with this technocratic uh, futuristic attitude, then in the future people will be nothing but uh, you know machines and computers well okay but what what does that matter to you why are you trying to argue for pragmatism your religion you is not be pragma going to pragmatic yeah. yes yeah. Your religion is focused on the afterlife. This life is nothing. Why are you arguing for worldly pragmatism? It doesn't make any sense. You know it's <laughs> It's funny that you. There's a super chat question. I think for you, a comment to you. So I think we should address that before we go further. So they're saying Daniel Hikikachu is either super smart, is either super smart and good acting atheist disguised as a Muslim to expose how awful Islam truly is, or he's just the dumbest Muslim there is, who totally missed the point of doing takia. He, um, I, I don't know about takia part though, but uh, he's. I think he definitely is stupid in that in, in in its literal meaning because this was the trap for him and he walked straight through it um so i i, I just tweeted and i think th this is why guys it's important please follow us on twitter because we need you guys um have a look at this one i just said there are two islamophobes in this picture destroying islam because <laughs> so, so, so he he's literally he, he's, he did a job. And this is exactly what I meant by let him speak. They're, they're like, I've responded to pretty much everything that he said. But obviously, as I said, there's quite a few things that just slip under the radar. You can't talk about them. And yeah. we're, we're making these videos. And it's fine. Okay, so now let's get on to the next one. Now, you said he, he talked about he was defending um, a patriarchal society and he was saying technocratic society. They, so, so, so there are a lot of golden quotes from this. The, these words do not come out from someone smart. So have a listen to this one, what he says here. So this is an excerpt that I just uploaded about an hour ago. So, uh, so th these kind of excerpts will be coming out quite frequently, guys. Just just watch what he says here. There, I'm going to actually... So, sorry, could you hear it? I could hear it. I think everybody else can okay. then hear it too, if I can hear okay. it. Yeah, if you can hear it, then I think everyone can. So I'm just uh, turning up the volume just in case. Thing. He's throwing everything out there. I'm going to actually respond with arguments i'll just respond to this uh wife beating argument um islam says power should be distributed across kinship groups and this means that the patriarch has authority to physically discipline members of his family including his wives if they violate important norms and values so so that that's the point when you if, if you're allowed to interject and you say at that point so he, he's literally saying Wives, if they don't obey certain commands, like the one that you raise at the point, providing sex or doing your chores, whatever her defined gender based, this is the ultimate gender based roles. And he's saying, if they don't do it, then you can physically discipline them. That's what he said so openly. Have a look at this, how he, how he tries to justify it. I mean, we all know that. We've all read 434 and we've all seen a bunch of hadiths that we've seen. We all know that. But let's see the level of his intellect, how he defends it or justifies it. Watch this. Now let's ask women. If you violate the law, shouldn't you face consequences? And if you have to face consequences, who would you rather mete out those consequences? The cold iron fist of the bureaucratic, technocratic <laughs> state or the person who loves you the most in the a person who loves you the most. That that's where I said 
And I think I said it afterwards. That's where, honey, I love you. And boom, <laughs> this is literally <laughs> what he's saying. So the police is going to beat her up, which, as I said, I, and I said it, I responded further on. So you can go and watch the whole video. Um, I, I did respond to his point and I did make fun of his ridiculous ideas. And so nobody's saying human rights don't allow that. If you, Ridwan, you or, or, or any woman or any man who commits crime, even if you commit murder, police just lock, police locks you up. They're not allowed to beat you up in a civilized society, yeah. right? Yeah. They interrogate you. They give you evidence. You even have a freaking right to say no comment. <laughs> you know? yeah. you, you're even, and here he is, he's saying the state will beat her up or her husband will beat her up. If I was a woman, I would rather be beaten up by my husband. I mean, there, what, there are so many layers defense. to this. There are so many layers to this. I want to just point out one ridiculous thing. Daniel Hikikiju is arguing for an Islamic state where a just Islamic ruler, a just Islamic government is in charge of providing justice to its population. And what is he saying? Would you rather want the, uh, you know, the iron fist of the state to beat your wife or would you rather want the most loving person who is the husband to beat your wife? <laughs> what, what, do, you, are you, do you understand what you're talking about? You are arguing for an Islamic state where there is Islamic justice and a just Islamic ruler appointed by the people but you are saying would you rather want this uh th this ultimate system of justice this ultimate uh just guy at the top to deal with your wife and to discipline her and to make her abide by the laws or would you rather leave it to a husband who is loving but who might be you know who is who is vigilant and who might have any sorts of motives to instead exercise this thing so do you not trust the justice of the law would you rather want to uh leave it to the husband who is a mere uh, civilian an individual who is not even equal to the wife who is actually superior to the wife under the islamic state i mean how does it make sense are you are you dumb I mean, <laughs> honestly I, I just i'm sorry i don't know how, how else to put this but that makes no sense you would in your just islamic system leave it to the justice system which according to you is so just and so beautiful to exercise the justice and the punishments within this uh, society within this country you wouldn't leave it to the vigilant husband who can abuse his authority and begin abusing his wife because he is a woman because he is a man, because he is a mere human who might abuse his rights, which is why people like Daniel Kikuchu want extreme laws, because humans make mistakes, humans abuse their own uh, power. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it, this is so incoherent. It's like, it, this is a no brainer. I feel like, dude, I mean, this is not hard to understand. And this guy is supposedly so smart and so sophisticated yeah. and brings forth such an idiotic argument, which makes me think this guy is not is so stupid. He is smart. But why does somebody who is intelligent come up with such an idiotic argument that fails at the very beginning and contradicts its very own core? It's because uh, it's, it, the only explanation is he it, that's what dogma does to you. Yeah. He he cannot get out of that. So in his, it's a part of his faith that I have to defend it. Now, how do I defend it? Mm, let's think about it. Uh, maybe fertility rates going down. Okay, let's. How do I pin that on human rights? I mean, he could he could have pinned that on postmodernism. <laughs> you know, that would have been just as irrelevant as putting that on human rights. But he picked that on human rights because that was a topic of the debate. You know, like I mean, Sharia is supposed to be women's rights human rights and he went on fertility rate and again as i said but it wasn't even true to begin with it's it, it's not even true so that's one argument he gave about wife beating that if she doesn't do her um you know whatever she's supposed to do whatever her roles are including providing sex then he has a right to physically discipline her but what else did he say have a look at this one This is your excerpt, though, so I'm going to play that one. Well well done on those excerpts, though, and keep them coming. I, man, I love them. I have more. <laughs> <laughs> we have enough content for the next two months. And I, yeah. and I want more. I want more. Please, Hakikachu, I, you think that you did such a good... Uh, yeah, it's the same thing. Now I know why you said that. You, you, if you think that you destroyed me, please destroy me again. I want to be destroyed again. <laughs> you know? Please, let's do it again. This time, any topic of your choice. Okay. For, wait, wait, wait now I know that now I know the level of his intellect, whether that's fertility rate or whatever that is, please 
destroy me again. I want to be destroyed. This is you're making a job so much easier. So have a look at this. This is how you're making a job easier. Well, I, I want to I want to say one thing here before we yeah. before we go on with that. So uh, Daniel Kikichu for a very long time claimed that he and I had a debate, you know, and that he defeated me in this debate. And recently, I even uh, just said just so he can agree to another debate, I said, okay, yeah, you defeated me. I lost. So I would never agree to a debate with him on uh, whether Sharia is just or not. That would be a very strange idea for me because I would first off debate whether the Islamic uh, claims are true or not. This is just me. I don't debate these things. I didn't agree to a debate. I agreed to have him on my channel for a discussion, an interview where he can freely speak his own ideas, as I already announced in advance. He then said, well, you know, because it escalated and it, it, it became a back and forth, he said this was a debate and all that. Fine. Okay. But I'm telling you uh, here again, dear Daniel Kikichu, I know you are watching this. I know you will watch this. Uh, I offered to you a debate before about whether Islam is true or not. I know you will never accept such a debate because that is uh, discussing theology and and and, and uh, epistemology is not something that you can uh, actually do. You are very weak with that. You instead want to talk about laws. But fine. If there was a misunderstanding before in our past, and if you really, truly want to have a debate on the topic of Sharia and human rights, I would love to, this is my debate offer, I would love to have a debate with you, a real debate this time, where I have an opening statement, you have an opening statement, we uh, have a discussion, we have uh, responses and all that, and I assure you, I will respond to all of your sources, including uh, the book uh, War Before Civilization, which you greatly took out of context, and I will respond to your points, and I will show to you and to your audience how shallow your, uh, your, your evidences are and how dumb your position actually is. I would never agree to such a debate topic, but I I want to do it this time for the sake of just showing how ridiculous your entire argument is. Please, Daniel, could you accept this? And, and cool. while, while you're doing that, please, Daniel, as you say, that you know, you destroyed me, even though your blood pressure was shooting up and you were going red and my little harmless jokes, which is just my nature to just crack a little joke, just to, you know, think, just cool down things. And you weren't happy with that. I, I'll, I'll promise I, will, I, I'll, I wouldn't even make those jokes, but let's do another one. <laughs> and any moderator of your choice, it doesn't have to be Muslim. Uh, you know, like I'm thinking maybe maybe he can be Muslim as well. Like I can, I can even throw someone in, like someone, maybe, maybe get a Muslim in as well who could just moderate the debate. And no opening statement, no monologues, because, you know, like now as I see that a lot of information gets lost. You claim that there were so many things that you wanted to respond to, but you didn't get the chance to do it. So let's have a, an hour and a half open discussion like that. No time, no nothing. We just keep talking unless we uh, have finished a point with a moderator who just makes sure that we don't start talking on top of each other. Let's do it another one. And on fertility rate again, if you want. I am more than happy to do it again. Fertility. Just fertility rate. Forget about everything else. Just fertility rate. Because now I have found out you are like uh, Muhammad Hijab who actually lies through. There's no study that says Sharia supports or Sharia increases fertility rate. Okay, maybe you didn't say that. You said Sharia promotes family values. Um, and, or you, you that... There's no study that says that. And also in your in Sharia part, you're saying wife beating or, or, or patriarchal society somehow support that. So uh, in, which, in which means wife beating is this specific element, because that's what I'm concerned about when it comes to um, family values and Sharia wife beating element. That's what I'm concerned about. So show me a study that says more you beat your wife. Fertility rate goes up. I am hands down for it because I know that can't be the case. You know why? Because. There are so many Western women who get beat up by their husbands too. Is this, is this something like one in three or something? Women face domestic violence. So how come those women in the West are not making as many babies? Because obviously it's got nothing to do with human rights or family values or anything. It's got very directly related to do. It's got to do with the actual GDP, economic prosperity, as I showed it earlier. So Haki got you anytime, son. Anytime. You're making businesses booming. Thanks to you. <laughs> Quick note. Count Dracula said, are we just going to ignore that he said he would allow his children to get murdered if they leave their religion? Apostate prophet. Uh, mm -hmm. I do have that in mind. I actually... Uh, We'll put, that as, that. put that aside yeah. to also make an excerpt of that in which he said that he uh, I think the focus there was on homosexuality yeah. where he agreed he that it. he would he would no, want he to it. No, but he dodged it. it no but he dodged the question 
You know he, how he, he dodged it? it. He first became angry and. <laughs> but then I covered it up. But then I finished his sentence at the end. So basically, throw them off the rooftops. I think yeah, I said yeah, that at the end. Yeah. So, so specific question was: If you one of your child turns out to be homosexual, mm -hmm. would would you apply Shari on them? He said, oh, "Would I apply Shari on them? Yes, I would." But he didn't specifically say. So I finished the sentence. I said, "Yeah, so okay, you'll throw them off the rooftops, right? Good, yeah, okay." Yeah, yeah. So there's I'll so make many questions. I'll post the excerpt he, of that. You'll see that. Yeah, so. he's he's not that honest as you claim he is. Okay, so we're talking about wife beating part, yeah. So he justified it. He said, "Okay, well, love. Would you rather have the state beat him, uh, beat your wife, or you would rather beat uh, have her beaten up by someone?" She loves like a beating husband. So what other excuses he gave for wife beating? Let's have a look. Daniel, if a husband forces sex upon his wife against her will, is that wrong under Sharia? Uh, so Islam comes with certain marital rights. Husbands have certain rights and duties. For example, the husband has to provide shelter. He has to provide clothing. He has to provide food. And the state, the, the Qadi, basically the Islamic state, can force the husband to provide for his wife and for his his children and his family this is something that's good this is an important policy that reduces the man's individual liberty and similarly the woman's individual liberty is also restricted that if the husband has a reasonable request for sexual relations reasonable then she is obligated to uh comply with that if she decides not to he can't start beating her and he can't start abusing her in a violent way but she, uh, the Qadi can say that, look, you're not meeting your spousal duties and therefore you will um, forfeit your mahar, for example, your the bride dowry, you will forfeit your other um, privileges as a wife. So there's give and take in marriage. That's why Islam is beautiful because it creates this dependency between husband and wife. It's not like modern sexless marriages in the West where women say, oh, I don't, I can leave my husband to have uh, no sex for months because I don't feel like it. I'm a, I'm a strong, independent woman. And meanwhile, the husband is working his tail off trying to provide for his family. But there's no obligation on his wife to reciprocate in any kind because she's a strong, independent feminist. And she has to have maximum choice and opportunity. Must. But the poor devil, he has to work and provide for all of that with no compensation or anything. Husband Return. gives shelter so he has the right to beat her up. I hate to do this. So, so husband, his argument was <laughs> husband gives a shelter, so beat her up. And then another point that he made at that point, he said, what, what did he say? He said, he, the poor guy works all day. Isn't that, isn't that there, was a, there was a clip from Mike Tyson when he was at his crazy stage when he said, man, I work so hard, I get beaten up, I get punched in the face, can't I even get a BJ? That's what he said. And then, so mm -hmm. this is... <laughs> what I kick at you is saying that man, I'm going out, I'm working hard, and I can't even get sex because she says that I'm a strong, independent woman. I mean, how are these arguments or or how are these conservative Muslims who are so conservative about sex is dirty or this? We don't talk about this, we have aura, we have this shame, honor, we don't talk about these things. And here he is openly talking about the, the these, I don't know, the, the, these are how, how do they see these arguments? As as good arguments, I, it beats me. Okay, he Shweb Muhammad said uh, you you got caught misrepresenting him. He denied that husband can beat his wife. False. Uh, what what we are saying here is not that he said here in this specific clip that you can uh, you know start beating her up. And all that. One. What we are saying is that uh, in the other part, he already said about wife beating that it is a man's right to discipline his wife. I mean, we just played that. He said yeah, he basically playing. compared the the husband to to the state or to an employer who can uh, you know uh, discipline his his wife by beating her. He already admitted that yeah, because yeah, the man is a caretaker and he also uh, admitted here now that the man has the right to get sex whenever he wants so we're not misrepresenting anything here that, that that's the part where you said that she can be respond with arguments i'll just respond to this uh wife beating argument um islam says power should be distributed across kinship groups and this means that the patriarch has authority to physically discipline members of his family including his wives there you go including his wives physically discipline them so he said it what part you didn't get it son that's the guy who that, that's the guy whose flute you're blowing <laughs> you know so, so. i, I, I want to address a few things harris uh sure 
with the clip that we just played, you know, before that one, uh, where he talked about uh, how the husband can force sex upon his wife. So th these uh, people who follow guys like Daniel Kikic, you like to point out uh, logical fallacies and things like, uh, you know, logical fallacies, distractions and all that. They will love to point such things out. In that very little short speech of what, like one minute, two minutes, he made a number of very serious fallacies. And number one, what he did throughout the entire debate, and especially the Q and A's, he avoided the actual point of the of the question and tried beating around the bush. Uh, he made a red herring, which he makes the entire time during the debate. Which means, uh, instead of directly addressing the issue, he tries to distract from it by bringing up certain things that uh, you know uh, appear interesting and appear good, such as you know that the husband has these and these rights, and the husband has restrictions and this and that stuff that is completely irrelevant to the topic he raises a uh, he makes a red herring fallacy you go on he brings up another fallacy which he does during the entire debate which is uh you know the the what, what about his more the to fallacy where he uh to or whatever it's called whatever it's pronounced uh where he this where he uh, distracts from the topic by responding, what about you guys? Or what about the West? What about the secular West? What about the evil West? The West does this and does that and does that. He responded to many questions, some of which he didn't properly answer, by always either directly, uh, you know, pointing at the evil, uh, corrupt West, or by eventually concluding the topic and bringing it to the evil West. He can just not stay off the evil, terrible, ignorant, immoral West. He also made a generalization, basically saying that this is what, you know, Western women are, and this is what happens in the West, and with feminism and all that. He made a slippery slope in which he argued that, uh, you know, not having this specific law will lead to a society where people are uh, sexless and where people engage in sexless marriages, which is extremely absurd. What he's basically arguing is that if there is no such law that women have to have sex with their husbands when the husbands want it, then this will lead to a sexless, uh, you know, a society full of sexless marriages and so on. He's engaging in so many fallacious arguments in just like one minute. And he did that through, throughout the entire debate. And people who follow him are so blind, they actually fall for that and they don't even see it. It's ridiculous. Yeah. The, the, there's so many points that um that okay and and well, let's go through that and Denver Johnson saying thank you very much for the super chat saying I'm glad that Daniel Hikikachu admitted his mindset most apologists dodge and play between the lines at least he's clear about his stance props to him he's actually only selectively clear about certain stances like sex slavery wife beating child uh, marriages he's only selectively w what he does in order to defend these practices he invents scenarios and studies and and his own opinions for example the most obvious one the whole debate the only thing the one thing you can take away from that apart from this you know his defense of slave child marriages sex slavery and wife beating apart from that the one thing you can take away from them he's saying human rights lower the fertility rate as though and the whole human civilization is going to collapse and you know human rights is the biggest issue human rights are extremists that's what he said the solution to that is sharia and we showed you Sharia or human rights have got nothing to do with fertility, right? That has got directly to do with your economic prosperity. So I, I, sh I shared that in my Twitter. So even his basic, his central argument, he got that wrong as well. So that's not where it ends. Um, uh, uh, Tolif is saying, I live in Mecca of Mormonism, Utah. And this sadly reminds me of Joseph Smith. Stay away from Mormonism. Stay away from Islam. Thank you very much for your super chat. and Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much. And, and, and you comment. Um, uh, so that's not all there is. What about child marriages? And, and, and we'll just go through all the arguments. That, so he apparently asked me some three questions and I, you know, I just never got the chance to actually go there because as soon as the discussion started, his attack was in human rights and whatever I could get in. I never got the chance to respond to those three questions. I don't even remember what those three questions were. But he actually did not answer to at least six of my questions as well, six of my points as well. Um, you, you spoke about, he was he's talking about, what about the evil West? I say Muslim countries are terrible places to live in, right? I am never going there. You can, you can multiply my income 10 times, and I think I said that. That if you okay, when he gave me this hypothetical, would you go there? I said, I personally wouldn't go. I, I wouldn't, I love Australia. I, I, I love there. Everything is beautiful there. But if you did that and my whole family could move there, maybe I might think about it. And I, I know other people might think about it. I personally wouldn't because I'm quite happy. But 
now reverse the scenario. Give me 10 times more than what I'm making and say, Harris, you can live in Afghanistan. He ain't going there. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> there. So, so what about why if West is so evil, what is it? Uh, 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 people who deal with uh, interest are definitely going to hell. And there are two other sins as well, because Muhammad used to say things in three. So there's one particular hadith. You're living in a Western democracy that is, according to you, thriving on the blood of Muslims and it's evil imperialism by, by, uh, by you know, um, killing countless amounts of uh, Afghan and Iraqi Muslims and who knows how many. You're living in a society where your kids are more than likely, and I raised that point, I said, your kids are more than likely going to be taken over by this Western culture. They, they, when they grow up, come of age, they're going to go to the nightclubs. They're going to make a girlfriend. They're going to, if they're daughters, they might actually like some boys as well. They're going to drink alcohol at some point. They're not going to look at the dad and they're going to say, dad believes in child marriage or whatever. So, okay, we're going to be just like that. It's not going to happen. You're fighting against the teenagers. You're fight, fighting against teenagers. not going to happen. So why are you taking the risk? As I said, I... I don't know about you because Turkish culture might be different. I know so many Pakistani families, when their children come of age, around 9, 10 years of age, they go back to Pakistan because they say, oh, our kids are now entering the dangerous territory where they might. So they go back and then they come back when when it comes to university or something. So they've kind of brainwashed (laughs) them. So why is Daniel Hakikachu taking that risk? You know how what what he said? He said, jihad is not obligatory. Okay, is that it? So now jihad is not obligatory. I'm going to live in a Western country. He did, did you notice how he didn't bring up the same argument that he brought up with you that, oh, my family is here because I knew because I was going to bring up the hadith. And uh-huh, I said that uh-huh. your family. You actually asked him. You asked, you asked him, uh, do you like your family? Do you love your family more than Muhammad? I think you asked that. Right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, and yeah. He didn't, I did respond that. To he didn't answer that. He didn't respond <laughs> to it. So, so, he, so there were so many questions that went and unanswered. Well, you, he made the claim. Didn't he make the claim in that you actually told me about his story? I didn't even know that. And, you know, like I was riffraffing between I was confused whether I should bring it up or not. And, and I and I did say my heart goes out to the Hikikachi family for this terrible tragedy that went out. But he in that article he wrote, he said that I all I'm going to say is don't leave, don't leave me alone in a room with someone who commits violence against women. Right. So he, he said that. And I quoted four instances. Really? Where, yeah, yeah he, he wrote that in that article. He said, all I'm going to say, don't leave me in a room with those who beat up women uh, or who commit violence against women. These were his actual words. So I said, what about Umar? Umar beat up his own wife. There's a famous hadith. I quoted that hadith. Um, Umar beat up the slave girl of Anas. Uh, Umar beat up the sister of Abu Bakr. And Umar beat up another woman. Uh, and the, 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 there must be the, quite a few as well. Um, so I quoted those four stories and I asked him point blank, what would you do if you're in a room with Omar? He didn't answer it. Um, and and, and <clears throat> the, there's so many questions that he actually didn't answer. So don't say he's actually honest. He's not He's not that honest as you as you make him out to be. He's only honest about the, the, about the very basics. I want, I want to show you something to show how dishonest he actually is. I asked a very specific question in a super chat toward the end of the, uh, the debate because I thought, hey, if he, he has to answer this question somehow, I wonder if he will give a direct answer to this. So let me share this quickly. I will share my screen here. So share system audio. Let me know if this works. Slaves. Yeah, working. The apostate prophet says, does Daniel want to go back to creating an Islamic empire and spreading Islam? Does he want to bring slavery back in that case? Yeah, so I mentioned um, this argument about slavery, a world with slavery. Okay, wait, this is not, this is not, the, this is not the right part. Wait, <laughs> wait, wait, I will find the right one and get back to Okay, you, you'll find that. Okay, so wait. in the meantime, I'll just talk about what else did he actually say? What, what he actually said about child marriages. So he's honest about that, but he's... His justifications are, are are atrocious. And why wouldn't they be? Because there is no justification for child marriages. He basically was implying, the, uh, not in this particular clip, but in, in a wider segment, he basically was talk, making a case for, um, there, there are studies that younger the girls are, when they get married, better, uh, more children, healthy children they're going to make. So how young? 9, 10, 11, 12? Okay, so there you go. I think I got it now. Apostate prophet says, Daniel, do you prefer Islamic law or secularism? If you had the power, would you eat? Would you want to return 
the U.S. into an Islamic country? What would happen to the resistant, disbelieving men and women in this Islamic America? We all know the answer, right? We all know if he. If, we just want to hear it. We just we want to hear it from. We all know the answer. If he prefers secularism or Islamic State, if he, if he wants to turn America into an Islamic State, we all know the answer. It's very clear. But we also, but but we also want that the whole point of that was not to refute him, yeah, but yeah. to expose him. Yeah. There are a lot of there are a lot of Westerners. The or, or James's audience was watching that as well. We want them to say, "Watch it," and they're like, "What?" <laughs> I, know, I I made the super jet solely. I know because I know exactly what he believes, in, and I want him to speak it out right there on modern day debate with all those non-Muslim viewers. That's the entire point. But see how he responds to this. So there's a lot of ways to spread Islam, right? And we invite, I invite non-Muslims in America and throughout the world to look into Islam, investigate Islam, look at these arguments that I'm, I'm making and have an open mind. Like you see this kind of con game and hoax that people like Harris and Apus are doing where they're trying to, you know, repeat the same talking points but it's all based on lies. And when you actually understand how Islam and Sharia law, orthodox, strict Sharia law, is promoting family and marriage and community and re results in flourishing of human life, all people, and how this has been the case for 1,400 years, then people will be open and will want to accept Islam. This is what I. This is my message to non-Muslims watching, and I do it with a very sincere and open heart. Didn't answer it. See, he never answered the question. He didn't answer it. He didn't never answer answered it. a very simple question because I knew exactly that this is an extremely hard-hitting question. And if he did answer this, he would be in big trouble. But he never, ever answered the question. He instead distracted completely, made some stupid rhetoric. He looks very tired and angry anyway at that time because he already got some questions from me. He, uh, he was smashed. He was smashed yeah, at that yeah. point. And on top of that, while not giving an answer to the actual question, which shows that he's not so honest, not as honest as he claims to be, because he would be in trouble if he did give a proper uh, answer to this question. He also then, for some reason, references Harris and me and says that we are just, you know, liars who bring up the same talking points, which are all based on lies. What is based on a lie? What, where is the lie here? I mean, I don't understand. He the, he does express that he wants to impose uh, Islam on the whole world. He answered the same question earlier. He does say that slavery is okay, even in the present or future time. So, what exactly are we lying about? Are we lying about the uh, you know the, the 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 idea that these things are bad or wrong? Is that what he's what he means by we are liars? I don't know. But see, he's not as honest as he claims to be and as people think he is. He could be more honest. And I invite Daniel Hikikichu hereby to be more honest to us. There is another argument that he made, um, which I responded to, I think, at some point, because, again, it just goes in so many points. And, and I it will, we will get a clip out of that because you know the, he's making like six <clears throat> different points. And when you think of that, I wrote so many points, but then you know you just re respond to certain points at, at a random time and people have forgotten about it. And, and these his, his cheerleaders are so high on on the excitement that they don't even they're not even listening. They're probably there's foam coming out of their mouth. So he said, uh, and I'm again steel manning, please correct me if I if I get it wrong. He said that back in the day, slavery was the norm. Yes, in this day and age, slavery was bad, but it was the norm. But in this day and age, we have invented horrible weapons. And those weapons um, uh, have somehow finished slavery because now, you, you know, this is even worse than what it was. So there is no correla correlation with the modern day weaponry with, um, uh, with slavery. The movement to abolish slavery, and I said that, came out uh, it had it was on full speed by 19th century uh, and especially after french revolution british were doing the same and then the middle of the 19th century we had the civil war and, and the, the czar of russia i think it was alexander the second he was doing that too that is pre advanced and dangerous weaponry um it, the, the nukes have got nothing to do with that secondly nukes are not used in every war there's only been two cases when nukes have actually been used mm -hmm. um you could still go, and as ISIS did, you could still go and take sex slaves. According to Daniel Hakikachu as well, if we ended, got rid of slavery, that's got nothing to do with weapons. It's got to do with the evolving morality and the discourse that led us. To, so, and, and now that's the point, this point I didn't mention, um, is 
if my soldiers attack his village, the, the point I mentioned, but not in this context, uh, attack his village, his wife will throw Muhammad under the bus and she would say, well, where are my human rights? Please don't take me as a sex slave. And I'm not per personally saying his wife. I'm just saying anyone, any yeah, woman yeah. at that point would not want to be taken as sex slave. What about all those women that Muhammad enslaved and his men did? The, another direct question I asked him, and I asked him about how would you feel that people come to your village, they murder your men, they take your women as sex slaves, they have to have sex with, with, with the very people who murdered their loved ones, their, their fathers and husbands and sons, and not only that, imagine the level of conversation that's taking place. My soldiers come to me and say, General Haris Sultan, we have found so-and-so's, uh, so and Abdul or uh, Bashir or Muhammad's wife. Should we drop our load? I'm sorry about the conversation, but this is exactly what's written in the Hadith. Should we drop our load inside her or we should pull it out? I asked that question to him. Where's the answer? How would you? This is the, the greatest mercy on the planet is actually, Stalin, that's the kind of conversation, I compared him, I compared Muhammad with Stalin, yes, they, they always throw Stalin in our faces, yeah, Stalin was anti-human rights, we're not, we, if anything, Stalin is more similar to Muhammad, I, I drew the analogy, when German women were being raped left, right and center by the Red Army, when when um, when the news was, uh, news reached to uh, General Asimo, um, uh, Comrade Stalin, that, you know, these women uh, are being raped by a red soldier. You know what Stalin said? Stalin said, oh, they've been through a lot. Let them have some fun. This is exactly what Muhammad did. At, at that battle of, uh, after that, uh, according to the Hadith, Otas, we came across some captive women. So we said, why don't we go and ask our prophet? Should we drop our load inside her? We should pull it out. Captive women. How, where's the answer to that? Even, so don't say he's honest. He's not honest. His skin crawls at some point. He's a sadist, though, as I said. He was upset about that. But he's a sadist. But even he knows that th these are hard-hitting questions and we shouldn't respond to them. He didn't respond to it. Here's one thing that I want to bring up uh, so we don't, so it doesn't look like Harris is just making this up. But uh, here is the actual Hadith, um, which talks about the situation. I entered the mosque and saw Abu Sayyid al-Khudri and sat beside him and asked him about al uh, about coitus interruptus, so, uh, you know, pulling out during sex. And uh, Abu Sayyid said, we went out with Allah's messenger for the ghazwa of Banu al-Mustaliq, for the campaign of Banu al-Mustaliq. Banu al-Mustaliq was a tribe that was, uh, you know, between Mecca and and the Muslims, and they fought with them in order to reach Mecca. Uh, and we received captives from among the Arab captives, and we desired women, and celibacy became hard on us, and we loved to do coitus interruptus, you know, pulling out with those... Uh, with those with those captives so when we intended to do it we said how can we do could just interrupt this before asking allah's messenger who is present among us so we asked him about it and he said it is better for you not to do so for if any soul is predestined to exist it will exist this so basically he's not saying place. when muhammad says it is better for you not to do so he's not saying no 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 don't rape them He's saying, no, no, don't pull out. But, you know, if you yeah. leave, if you drop the load inside, that, that 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 would be better. But still, it's okay. Yeah, you don't need to pull no. out. It's like, it's, you know, it, it, what's destined to happen will happen. Just just do it. Don't You don't need to pull out with those uh, servants. Because, they were, get, because yeah. they were concerned about bastard kids, basically, or, or yeah. kids from the slave women, because then they can't sell them. They become useless. Because if your slave girl becomes pregnant, you can't sell the slave baby or the slave girl. So they become useless. They don't work anymore. But now they used to, okay, we're pulling out. They're not impregnated. Now we can sell them to someone else. This, this is a perfectly legal practice. And this guy and his cheerleaders advocate for this morality. And then they say, yeah, we won. I mean, sure, keep winning, please. But again, as I said, they're not 100% honest either. He didn't answer this question either. He didn't answer the whole concept of objective morality, subjective morality. And they're, 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 now they're making fun of snails. The whole point was your morality is subjective. And he admitted it. He said, he said, some things are objective, some things are not. So hang on. So the whole Sharia that you're saying is subjective then. It is subjective, yeah. right? So he admitted yeah. it. So their biggest argument against us is that, oh, your morality is subjective. By the way, our subjective morality ended up abolishing slavery and protecting women from becoming sex slaves. <laughs> 
Lindsay and Mary made a, made, made, made a chat, uh, which is basically the representative of, of what Daniel Hikikichi would say in response to this. If they pull out, they will be contributing to extinction. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like something that he would say, yeah, definitely. And, uh, and, and look, there, there, there's actually some truth in that, because this is the reason why Muslims are actually obsessed with increasing their numbers. So that's why Prophet Muhammad also said, don't pull out, leave it in there, drop it mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter, make more babies. At least they're gonna be Muslims. So let me show you uh, a brief part of the, about the whole slavery thing. I want to uh, correct one thing, Harris. Um, mm. When he talked about slavery, he did not actually imply or mean to say that slavery is nowadays not acceptable or that uh, you know that it was abolished for certain reasons and this and that. He merely tried to say that uh, slavery is no longer in existence because of you know advanced oh, yeah. weapons and this and that. But he didn't say he didn't give any opinion on whether on on you know that it is it is bad or that it was meant to end. In fact, oh, right. he he did uh, talk about the possibility of bringing it back. By the way, a little small point on that. He kept referencing a book called uh war before civilization by uh by keely by lawrence keely yeah lawrence, i actually, yeah, I actually yeah. looked into that book because he brought it up before in a different discussion with me and the whole book which he references is not does not really support his point the book basically uh tries to look into civilizations and tries to argue that uh despite our imaginations and depictions of ancient civilizations humans were actually very violent savages in the past you know even the most uh supposedly peaceful civilizations and he's basically uh you know laying all that out and talking about how violent uh, humans were he's not arguing for how uh you know taking slaves for example is a functional thing he's merely pointing out about uh, how slavery in some societies was a necessity or was considered a necessity daniel hikikachu is of uh persian origin of iranian origin he should very well know he should very well know that uh, the persians were a civilization that didn't have slaves they were known as people who were against slavery long before Muhammad. It was against Indians. their moral values. Indians yeah. didn't have slavery either. They, yeah, they had yeah. other issues. They had caste system, but it wasn't slavery. So mm -hmm. the slavery was mostly Middle Eastern and European problem. Yeah, and, yeah. And some African as well. Yeah. But let, let's come to this. Let okay, us... uh, so I'm going to address slavery and sex slavery, but let me just explicit for the be explicit for the audience since Harris doesn't seem to be getting it. I'm arguing that Sharia... Uh, law is superior to human rights because Sharia rule preserves marriage and family, okay? And human rights doesn't. It destroys marriage and family and unity and the human race. That's the argument. Uh, so let's move on to slavery. Uh, the reality is to win a war in the pre-modern period, it was all about manpower. The main factor in whether your people would live or die was numbers. So this meant that if you won a battle, you couldn't just let the captives go because they would just regroup and attack you again or join your enemies. So you, you only had two options. You either had to kill or enslave. Neither option is good, right? But that's just the nature of war. You always have to use violence against the other side. You either kill or enslave. So Harris, you want to criticize Islam and call Islam barbaric for having slavery, but imagine if I asked you this question. Do you support using weapons in war? Do you support using guns to shoot people or swords to stab people and kill people? Do you support that? Because all of that My. is... All of that is. I mean, he's doing something very stupid, which he did again during the whole discussion, especially when he compared. When he said, "Do you support laws?" Well, if you support laws, then you also support uh, the the idea that women should be accountable and that women should be, uh, you know, beaten or even killed in certain situations. So, how can you possibly object to you know disciplining women physically? He somehow has this weird, messed up idea that if you, uh, you know, support one form of something, then you support everything else that has anything to do with it. Just because you might support the idea of, uh, uh, you know, a necessary defensive war and a necessary army to, you know, for the defense of your own realm, that doesn't mean that you also thereby support genocides. You know, this is this is very stupid. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Presumably, you'd say, yeah, of course, I support weapons and killing because how else are you going to fight war and defend yourself? Well, that's exactly the point with slavery. In the pre-modern period, you couldn't have war without slavery any more than you could have war without weapons and killing. False. Many civilizations in the world have uh, lived very well without slavery. And I said before to him, and I said this in the past, and his fans keep misrepresenting me, I said that slavery is historically justifiable. 
People mm. did commit slavery. They did do this. They did this for a reason. They did this out of necessity. They thought, well, okay, I, I guess we just we should just take them as slaves. So otherwise, they will attack us. The, it is histo historically uh, justifiable. It is simply not a good solution and definitely not applicable today. It's with everything that we know. And, and, and as per the claim, Islam is for all times. It's a perfect book. The Quran says that today I have complete... I've completed the instructions for you. Um, so what kind of a complete instruction is that? That it's not even complete according to all, the, them now. Like he, he's okay. Like I, I actually didn't pick that up. You you pointed pointed out that he actually wasn't saying that, no, 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 slavery shouldn't be applied now. He was just simply saying that slavery um, is not possible because of these dangerous weaponry, which is, which is obviously bullshit. You don't drop nukes. You can, uh, what was stopping America... What was actually stopping America from going to Afghanistan and Iraq when all those men that were killed, just taking the women to some American base there and raping them? What was stopping the United States? The modern ethics, right? The UN Charter, yeah? Those soldiers, whoever did commit crimes in Abu Ghraib and uh, wherever, they uh, within power, whatever you could do, they were, they were court martials. They, they, were, they were tried for war crimes. Serbians who uh, committed war crimes against Bosnians. They were charged with uh, war crimes. In Muhammad's world, in a Sharia world, you forget about war ch getting charged for war crime. Oh, that was a necessity. So he, yeah, we just did some coitus interruptus and we did some pulling pulling out. That's what the, the this is the whole argument. It, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. But it makes sense to these guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, let's move on. In other words, if killing people can sometimes be justified, then slavery can also sometimes be justified. And this is exactly what your friend, apostate prophet, accepted open with open arms in our debate last year. Um False. He, he leads the whole uh, lie. And people who listen to him simply follow him. I never said, I never said that it is acceptable. I said that slavery is historically, I don't know what he, if, if he knows what historically means, he should by the books that he gives us as references. I said that slavery is historically justifiable or justified. And this is not something that I just admitted during uh, our discussion with him. I already, I even b before our discussion, I made a video in which I talked about slavery, in which I explained that in the past, slavery was a norm for certain purposes, which is why I would not sit here today and condemn Muhammad as a slave trader, uh, you know, within the context of his time. I only called out Muhammad because Muhammad is supposed to be, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the universal, timeless, uh, moral example for all humankind. That's what happened, guys. It's not very hard. Imagine in the future they invent a new technology for war where a laser shoots from space and can directly target any person in the world. And the technology is so precise that there are zero casualties other than the intended target. Then people in this future might look back at our time and say, look how barbaric those people in the 21st century were. Look how barbaric with their tanks and guns and bombs. That would be very short-sighted of those people in the future, but it would be especially strange if uh, people in that future still argued that we should uh, not be, you know, not have to use that technology. We should instead just bomb countries who were unnecessarily. The, the, and those people, the wrong comparison. And and those people would only be calling us barbaric if people of our time are saying that this is it. This is the perfect. This is yeah. the only way to yeah. conduct the war. Yeah, then they will be saying, how stupid were these guys who thought that this was the perfect way to conduct the war? As Muhammad says, or the or Quran claims that this is it. I've completed the book for you. It's got everything in it from rules, uh, from how to treat your wife, how to treat your slave, to how to conduct wars. That These are the claims of Islam, of, of the Quran and the, the whole Islamic theology. So then they would say that. So again, Hikikachu, I mean, this guy is supposed to be smart. I mean, the Harvard graduates, they need to be sent these videos. Uh, he, uh, he is acting like we are uh, criticizing and condemning the past. That's not the point of mm. this at all. <laughs> I've said it so many times that Muhammad was probably, Muhammad was product of his time. I actually sometimes been criticized for saying that, that he wasn't overly evil either, as some people say. I actually don't call him overly evil. I just say he was a product of his time. Yeah. But don't tell me that he was the perfect role model for all times. He's obviously not. Absolutely, absolutely. Would that make any sense? 
That's exactly what you're doing by criticizing Islam for slavery. You should just acknowledge that slavery could be completely justified in certain circumstances, which, by the way, are the circumstances people have lived in for 99% of human history. Now, if you want to argue that Islam requires enslaving people today, I would say that that is not correct. It depends on the imam. If Look, he did not say that it is not okay to enslave people today. What he says is that it is not required to enslave people. All and right. he just added that today part for no reason, actually, because he, he's right. The Islamic State, the Islamic ruler, is not required to enslave the enemies of Islam. But what is exactly is the point of bringing that up? That's like saying, hey, I have the right to you know, uh, massacre people, but I don't have to. I could also choose to forgive them. Well, it's great. So what? That doesn't change the fact that uh, I can, you I, have can right. still, I can still, yeah. I still have the right to massacre people. It doesn't change the fact that the Islamic State is still within their rights, according to Islam, to enslave people. Bringing up the principle of uh, you know, possible forgiveness Forgiveness does nothing at all to this discussion. It's they, they, so are you are you telling me? So, so he actually fooled me on this one. Yes, he did. I I, I actually <laughs> thought I he did. I actually thought that he was saying, and this is why I think at some point I did say that to him that have you changed your worldview on that on bring back slavery? Because I was told that his view is bring back slavery. And I said that. I said, Oh, have you changed? Because I thought that he's saying it's not applicable today. Um, so that's what I thought in that debate that this is what he's saying. But uh, and I, there you go. That's another question he did. He dodged again because look, I look. said, I said to him, I said, oh, don't you believe in bring back slavery again? He didn't respond to that. So he does believe mm -hmm. in that. Wow. Who says so, that he's so look, honest? I mean, he he said to me uh, just a year ago that uh, you know slavery would come back in his uh, I ideal future where an Isla where an Islamic empire would be established. He said it to myself. If he did change his mind on that, and I don't see any indication from that, then I would. Uh, it would be very important for him to come out and to say, hey, you know what, guys, I changed my mind. I no longer support uh, slavery in the present and the future. But he didn't do that, and he here didn't change his mind either. But let's keep listening. See, sorry for going on with this, but this is very important, I think. If you read Fiqh, Islamic jurisprudence, this is very clear. There's no requirement that people captured in <clears throat> war are enslaved. This is discussed in classical fiqh books, for example, Bidayat al-Mujtahid by Ibn Rushd in the 12th century. See, 12th century, and people since then have enslaved people for centuries, which he supported and justified. So he is arguing from something that was already around in the 12th century, which is not that slavery is uh, not good or shouldn't be done, but rather that uh, it is an option, but not necessary, but not a necessity. So the ruler can say, okay, you know what, guys, let's forgive these enemies let's not enslave them go to kitab al-jihad and he summarizes the position of the four sunni schools of fiqh the imam has the option to pardon people and forego pardon. taking slaves in war forego the imam does not does not have the option to suspend for example hudud punishments for lashing like lashing for fornicators but taking slaves is one of those issues where the imam can forego if it's in the best interest of the muslim community in the best so interest in so he can choose to forgive right. and to forego, to pardon and to forego, but he is within his rights to do that. So it's a choice. So, so Baghdad. So my argument about Baghdadi was right. So Baghdadi saying that I, uh, who is UN or the United States or these Westerners to tell me that I'm not allowed to take these Yazidi girls as sex slaves? Who are you? Who 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 are they? Yeah, I'm gonna take them excess sex slaves. It's up to him. It's upon his discretion to either take them or let them go. Yeah. But I can take it. That's yeah. what he's saying. Yep. So that he didn't he didn't clearly answer it. It's being very tricky, right? Because it, according to Islam and according to the uh, to the to the fiqh of the schools and even the you know the the independent uh, uh, fuqaha, the, the 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 scholars and all that, it is it is an eternal command that you you know there is nothing that that uh, explicitly abolishes slavery and it says you may no longer take slaves in these in these in these circumstances slavery is always as a concept existent within the quran the quran makes commands about slavery the quran treats slavery as normal and muhammad directly uh you know supports it and does it so Theoretical imam could exercise this option and still be 100 percent consistent with the most strict understanding of traditional Islamic law.
an option. Now, Harris, since you seem to be ignorant about these details about Islamic law, I'll do you a favor and steel man your argument for you. You could respond to me and say, well, Daniel, fine, slavery could be justified in the past, but now with modern technology, modern weapons, uh, clearly slavery could never be justified. That means Islamic rules regarding slavery are not justifiable in our modern context, which means at least one aspect of Islamic law is obsolete. And if one aspect of Islamic law is obsolete due to modern technology, then why not all of Islamic law? So here he is now tackling the entire argument. Slavery was justified in the past, but is no longer today uh, justified. And if it's not just if it if one aspect of uh, Sharia is not justified, then you know the whole Sharia could just go down the drain. And he wants to I counter that now. So I think I clearly, I think I clearly purely zoned out on this because I, <laughs> I genuinely thought that he was saying that he's making the argument that slavery is just not justified in this modern day and age because we have this modern weaponry and it's just not possible. So, so he's he's contextualizing it in terms of the 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 uh, the time periods that in those time periods we didn't have those modern weaponry and that's why. So there you go. So I so I obviously. In that case, because I, I, I thought maybe he had turned off his compassion switch just a little bit, <laughs> but obviously I was wrong. <laughs> so, so yeah, he, he goes on after this part, uh, basically arguing that, uh, you know, and, and then he asks you the whole question, like, do you prefer uh, slavery or do you prefer, you know, a nuclear war and annihilation and all that? So the, there are, you are between these two choices and he does not prefer the new way of uh, mass killings and mass destruction. He thinks that slavery is in comparison a better option. Option and that it may still be applied today. So this is this is his stance. You know, he's arguing for slavery, and people in even people who follow him came onto my channel and said, uh, I saw one or two people who said uh, he doesn't argue for slavery today. Well, you're not getting it. He does. He says it is justifiable today. He's explaining that very well. <laughs> right, right. So, so, so these are the. This is the intellect of the people that we're dealing with. So he goes, Harris, how better to be a slave and have a lot of rights for twenty years, or to be locked in a room for twenty years if you're a criminal? So, what kind of a crime would put me in prison for twenty years? I'm assuming murder, right, or rape. So. These guys who are enslaved are not murderers or rapists. They're yeah. simply they've been captured. They just lost the war, <laughs> you know. So that's why. So if I was a murderer or, or rapist, depends on who you rape. But let's just say if I was a murderer of a Muslim guy, I wouldn't get the choice to be uh, to be a slave. I'll get boom, beheaded. Yeah. So yeah. no, even in that case, I would rather be in prison for twenty years so I could come out. So, that, so the, these guys don't even know their own arguments. So that, that that's what we're dealing yeah. with. Dear Ahmad Ashraf, I think you're you think you're doing uh, Islam a favor, and you think you're doing Daniel Hikikichu a favor here, but that is a horrible argument. It is extremely stupid. I, please, please stop it. <laughs> I'm sorry for you. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Harris. Um, uh, yeah, look. So I, I I just wanted to go with this uh, next topic where he basically um, spoke about child marriages, which is obviously a disgusting, disgusting part and disgusting. People say that disgusting is no argument. Disgusting actually is an argument because they're natural disgusters, disgust that we established. It has a very strong evolutionary purpose. For example, if I gave you distilled urine, would you drink it? Probably not because you'll be disgusted by it because our biological mechanism has created some this feeling of disgust and we stay away from that now some parts of disgust are actually um, are the artificial in a sense that we we get disgusted if we see blood if we see someone's neck being cut off unless you're a sadist and your compassion switch is totally switched off like daniel Gikachu, we don't want to watch it even if it's your enemy like i saw some videos on you know, when these afghan uh, supposedly had captured some Taliban who I don't like. They, they were slicing their necks off and I couldn't watch it. So that disgust serves a purpose. So disgust also serves a purpose. And there's a reason why a lot of other animal species don't actually commit pedophilia. I think bonobos are probably one of the very few ones who do that. But anyway, so disgust is actually not a bad argument. But having said that, um, this is the this is his argument. So let's have a look what he actually has to say on child marriages. Thank you very much, um, uh, Ridwan, for actually making this. Marriage to uh, nine-year-olds is not considered pedophilia. What is pedophilia are the practices 
of modern pedophiles who go into the closet and diddle little kids. How, how is this not a money shot? Just, just, just tell me. I mean, the, the, the whole linguist, the whole language is being reinvented here. Just, just listen to this part again. Marriage to uh, nine-year-olds is not considered pedophilia. So it's not considered pedophilia. I mean, what, what is pedophilia? Then? So having sex with a child is not pedophilia. Can, can you explain that? I actually, uh, I, I know what he's going for, which is why I put the whole thing up there. Okay. Uh, pedophilia in psychology is described as, uh, you know, this uh, unusual sexual interest in uh, technically in prepubescent children, which is technically in the most rigid form, that is what's called pedophilia. And there is an argument, there is a debate on whether uh, that is a mental disorder or whether it cannot be classified as a mental disorder, whether it's part of a different disorder and so on. So there is that whole discussion going on. There is then a difference between being sexually interested in prepubescent children or, uh, you know, postpubescent or pubescent children. There is that whole difference. But this issue has nothing to do at all with the question that's being asked and with so, what, what you are, what you are, what you are bringing up, which is uh, his whole, the whole idea of uh, having sex with a child, uh, you know. A, a six-year-old that was the question a six-year-old uh, marrying a six-year-old can still be practically it can be considered pedophilia he's just stuck on the rigid definition of what psychology says about this which again is completely unrelated to the topic which is the reason why nobody allows uh, no sane country would allow uh, sex with a nine-year-old even if she's had her uh, she has reached puberty because puberty is just one element of it her body hasn't even grown to that point so he's just going into psych psychology okay so so that was his trap okay and and the fun the funny thing is what I, what I what i just want to ask in response to this uh to daniel kikichu is okay um if you are ready to say this and if you are ready to say there is nothing wrong with the islamic form of child marriage because you will get married to the child whereas in this uh you know modern form of pedophilia you are uh you know molesting children well what exactly is wrong with uh, pedophilia according to you if it is not the factor of age if it's not the fact that a 50 year old man is uh, sexually attracted to a child then what exactly is uh, bad about about pedophilia according to you what daniel kikachu answer the question is it wrong to have sexual a sexual attraction and sexual interaction with a six-year-old or a nine-year-old can he answer this, this question i what think what is pedophilia are the practices of modern pedophiles who go yeah. into the closet and diddle little kids that's ab abhorrent that is an ab abomination islam does not promote that islam promotes marriage it promotes family it promotes these wholesome values and other societies have practiced this as well he said so i i, I want to ask you so j just for just to understand this as well so he he's basically saying if you have and this is the argument i made i think we should just finish this one what, what i actually said because i because it seems like it's going in a different direction yeah, islam doesn't on. allow you know the western way you know like how there's pedophilia etc yeah islam just legalizes pedophilia uh, aisha one could actually argue she actually didn't even have kids so maybe she was damaged internally because she was married at the age of nine this is what happens when you become so dogmatic about it. so uh, so so he's he's basically so as you said that he's actually going with the psych definition of psychology that pedophilia is only attraction to prepubescent kids um and he's saying that uh so, so he, he technically he's going with with that so nine-year-old if she's had a period then that is not pedophilia but then he attacks the western pedophiles but aren't western pedophiles doing the same thing let's say if a western pedophile goes after a, a girl who's already had her period why is he calling them pedophiles then by the same by by, by the same logic yeah and, and and what is bad about it, according to him? I mean, if, if there is nothing wrong with the sexual interaction and the, the attachment, what exactly is wrong about it? Please elaborate, Daniel Kikichu. Unless he's saying, unless he's saying, which I think he's definitely saying that, that unless it's a marriage contract, so it promotes family value. So basically he's saying you can marry a nine-year-old girl, a girl who's had her first period. You can. So since you're starting a family with her, that's why it's okay. If you just have sex with her and leave her, basically rape her and leave her, that's not okay. Islam doesn't promote that. Even though with with sex slavery, is there, I, I don't think there's any limit to sex slavery. 
I, I don't think there's any age limit with, with sex slavery. If you yeah. remember the top of my head, I don't I don't remember it. So um so what's happened? So there's so many contradictions and the, the the paradoxes within the theology that they just don't seem to get it. So so there is so the problem that I think it could you then has with pedophilia, with uh, Western pedophilia as he calls it, which is a very stupid thing to say, is not uh is not the sexual interest in children is not the sexual interactions between an adult and the child the the only problem is that it takes place without marriage so if there is a marriage happening between them then it's actually totally fine so he actually holds uh sexual interest by adults by 50 year olds in little children at the age of six or nine as completely uh you know comparable to simply two uh 16 year olds having a sexual relationship probably Oh, by the way, uh, what about the uh, Quran 65.4, the, the, the verse that actually says you can divorce prepubescent girls? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and his, his scholars, the scholars that he takes as an example, have, uh, have said forever that that Quran verse is proof that you don't have to wait until yeah. a, a child is pubescent to marry her. The, the, this is the Quran verse uh, we're talking about. So, as for you women past the age of menstruation, in case you don't know, their waiting period is three months, and those who have not menstruated as well. So, so obviously here this verse is telling you about uh, who you can divorce and what's the process for that. So, who have not menstruated? So those girls, um, and and I get there are some people who misinterpret or interpret it differently, but as you as AP said. There are a lot of scholars who actually use that as a justification for uh, divorcing prepubescent girls. And obviously, you can only divorce them if you've married them in the first place. Yeah, yeah. so that, that's the whole point. If you want proof, um, it would take too long right now, but I'm, I'm pretty sure there is uh, the website Islam Q&A, mm. uh, the Islam Q&A, which is a very notorious website, uh, giving such fatwas that people like Danny Kikic would like to follow. I think they have certain articles uh, about this very issue, and they argue that there is no age limit and that you can basically marry you know, any age, you know, from, as soon as the child is born. And but this, but this is the one you're talking about. I, I, I know the article you're talking about. So there's a question asked. I have not yet reached the age of puberty. Is it correct that a girl could get married before her menses start? Or is that just a tradition? I actually want to know who is this girl. This is probably a made up question. So like a seven year old yeah. girl paste, po posting that. Praise be to Allah. Firstly, marriage to a young girl before she reaches puberty is permissible according to Sharia. And it was narrated that these were scholarly consensus. So, the, so you can go, and he quoted the same verse, chapter 65, verse 4. So uh, it's not just us saying that who are mis deliberately misinterpreting. These Muslim scholars uh, have already uh, acknowledged that. So it's not just post-pubescent girl, which shouldn't even be the criteria because nine-year-old girl could have a period. But even before that, you can do it. Yeah, yeah. So this is not something that we're just making up. This is, as you have seen, this has, this has precedence in uh, in Islamic scholarly work. This is in existence on one of the major uh, fatwa websites of our time. So this is stuff that you actually find there. This disgusting stuff is stuff that you find there. And when we now point out how ridiculous this is, they say we're just being emotional. We're just uh, you know appealing to the to the yucky factor, the icky factor, but. Dude, that's not what it is. I brought it up in my in my excerpt as well. It is very well known, and I could bring up random citations about that. That child marriage has extremely terrible consequences for the child itself, uh, physically, psychologically, sexually. It has uh, terrible consequences for the future of this child, for uh, a possible child that may be born from a pregnancy that was given to a child because uh, a child is not ready to get pregnant. Although she is able to, she is not physically ready to get pregnant and to properly, you know, uh, to, to properly feed a, a fetus and so on. So th these people think as soon as a child starts her period, that means, okay, yeah, this is the body sign that that she's now ready for 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 you know for for, for pregnancy. That's not how it works. That's just a development of the body. Just because you have a brain at the age of four, that doesn't mean you can just go to a uh, university or to rule a country where, when you are at the age of four. You know, you have to wait until it properly develops to a certain stage. Yeah. All right. Uh, there's quite a lot. I think we could go through, but um, like, uh, do do you remember anything else that we should cover more? <laughs> 
Somebody brought up something earlier that I made a note of, I think. I don't know, there was so much. I still want to make some <laughs> excerpts of that whole thing. There, there, there are quite a lot. There, there's actually quite a lot, as I said. Um, uh, we, I, I will be putting them up, stitching the reducing the background noise obviously not misrepresenting him because that doesn't win anyone anyway i've never lied and this is what i say sometimes this is why it's actually a disadvantage according to these guys because these guys like muhammad hijab daniel kikachu they lie in the debate and they're like ha 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 we got him we got him and it's a total lie that they dodge the questions and then they run with it and then only later on people find out, hang on, you lied about it. When Cosmic Skeptic caught him red-handed about utilitarianism, that he lied about it, it, it was just he meant he just remembered it at that point. That that's not even the title of the of the chapter. Um, and then he said, okay, check it. And they checked it then and there, and it was fine. So th these guys can lie on the spot um, only to get away with it, but their mindless followers just go like, well, yep, yep, we got it. So um, it, it, it's... Uh, uh, that's why it's important to actually put those points up later on. I always believe that we should put those points up later on, and that's what we're doing. So please subscribe to my channel, which is actually showing that. Underneath. Absolutely. Please, please do that. Uh, I want to show this part, which somebody brought up earlier. An apostate prophet says, Daniel, under Sharia, should homosexuals be executed if your own child openly engaged? Watch the debate that I had with you, a <laughs> Just answer it. <laughs> Just answer it. I, I loved it. You know, I loved bombarding him with these questions. And Literally, he's so angry. He's so angry. His blood pressure is going through. Watch the, the debate I had with you, a puss. Watch Just say the yes. Up. They you. said, hey, Just say All right. Watch the, throw them off the rooftop. Watch throw the here. debate. Look, he's asking. So, this apostate prophet, I debated him already. And all of his questions we discussed in his debate. So, he's just rehashing it. This is. Uh, ridiculous. You, what kind of okay. moderation is this? Because, okay. because well, the world wants to see more of that. Well, I mean, I can't purposely just exclude questions to favor a particular Why? debater. So Why not? Says, this is your channel. Because, Why not? Because I don't want to favor a particular debater. I've, you're the first person out of 600 debates that we've that's asked for this. We have you ever you had? Okay, treatment. have you ever so had? Have you ever had a previous debater comments. come into the chat and try to overtake the Q and A? Have you ever had that situation? In your 600 debates? <laughs> He's asking questions. If you want to ask a lot I mean, of questions, I don't think that's unfair. Uh, like, I don't think that's So don't tell me that it's unprecedented we'll that jump. I have a problem with this. Look how, look how angry he is. I, I enjoy this so much. Blood he, yeah, <laughs> this is crazy. But uh, he'll answer the question. I want to well, think. It is a we're not, well, it's so unprecedented we're jump, to have a previous going. debater I, come and hijack the chat. It's... It's not unfair for him to want to ask care. a lot of questions. I took we care read them of in Apus. the order that they come okay. in. I, so I my mean, answer I to the, when my I answer try to, to respond to you, you try to speak over me. I'm just giving you a response. Am oh. I, do you not want people to hear my response because you know it's better than yours? So let's go to the next one. Oh. <laughs> that, that was so sad. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, like, yeah, I just... just... Put the final nail in the coffin. <laughs> oh, boy. But Daniel, if your own child openly engaged in sexual interactions with the same sex, would you want your child to be executed in your ideal Islamic system? If my own child, do I want my own children and family to be subject to the Sharia? Yes. Gotcha. This one coming in from... So uh, that was the point of the of the question. Somebody brought up, brought it up earlier. So I have to applaud General Kikichu for his consistency here, for not being a hypocrite. Uh, he the question is if his own children engaged in homosexual interactions under his ideal Islamic uh, state, would he be okay with also having his own children killed? And he said indirectly, he said, "Yeah, sure." So, he didn't. He didn't specifically say. And th th this is what I think I. Uh, you can only uh, interrupt so many times. So th this is why I was saying. So you basically throw them off the rooftops. And it's important to have those gestures because um, because so people can visualize what kind of a person he is or, or what kind of – everyone might be – there's a saying that everyone is born innocent um, uh, when they come out of their mother's womb or something. But So he would have been innocent as well. The only reason he becomes this – as, as as terrible human being as he has is because of one thing that's islam islam is making him defend these kind of things so what kind of a person would say if my son is gay i will throw him off the rooftop this is this, in other words this is what he said yeah and and this is why i gave this analogy uh in in my um i don't know in one of my monologues i said 
even ISIS soldiers, we have these videos, AP, that even ISIS soldiers were crying when they were throwing some homosexuals off the rooftops. They were crying. They were like, brother, so sorry, but they have to throw. So, and here he is with a straight face saying, yeah, mm -hmm. if it's homosexual, I'll throw him off the rooftop. How many, some, some people say he's got some, he's got a few boys, uh, no daughter, I think. But just imagine if uh, one of the child turns out to be gay, which is purely natural. Nobody can do anything about it. And he would want him dead and not just dead, but thrown off a rooftop. That's what he would believe in. So, by the way, this is also a fringe view, throwing off rooftop in Islamic jurisprudence as well, yeah? But he's so hardline, he's so far radicalized that he actually believes in that version that, no, it's not just death. Throw them off the rooftop. But I guess any type of death would be rude, terrible yeah. anyway. He earlier made us. Uh, he was he was live earlier. I don't know if he's still live, but he basically said that um, his whole dispute with me was initiated by me, which is why he you know started calling me names and attacking me and this and that. And he brought up how I basically you know made fun of him. I made a video about him and all that. How it actually started was that he made a a post on Twitter in which he posted a picture of some uh, extreme sports, some bungee jumping or something, uh, where he said uh, you know. Um, that he, he said something along the lines of, I forgot that it is, uh, you know, the uh, LGBT uh, Pride Month or something like that. Oh, so wow. here is, uh, let us celebrate it with extreme sports or something like that. So he was alluding to, he was making fun of, uh, you know, throwing gay people off the roof by posting such a sarcastic post. And I just responded to him on Twitter by just saying, uh, you are a piece of shit or something like that. And then he made a response to me in which he said, uh, don't worry, apostate. Uh, we also have, you know, uh, specific uh, kinds of celebration for you. So he was then talking about executing apostates. I then made a video making fun of that. And then he invited himself onto my channel. So that is what actually happened. You know, he jokes about killing people, including homosexuals and apostates. I then invite him and then he thinks I just started attacking him and all that. So he has his ways of... Uh, at the same time, <laughs> playing the victim while also brutally attacking yeah. the other side, and you know, with it with very terrible things. Which, which is why I was a little bit surprised that he, his fans were like saying, "Oh, you know, Harris was bullying him, insulting him, making jokes or whatever." It's like, mate, you 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 do that. The, the, the whole build up of that, I actually get it now. This is and this is where he probably got it wrong. He probably got this massively wrong. He thought that he's gonna rile me up. And I'll be frotting and I'll be losing it. And I'll, and I'll be like, he, he, he just didn't know much about me. Like, this is just how I conduct myself. This is how I normally talk. Like, I crack a few jokes, eh, throw a little funny jive here or there, just a little bit of an insult, just funny one, nothing too harmless, uh, harmful, but just, just throw one in. But at the same time, keep my mind, uh, keep my head above my shoulder. So, and that's what I was doing. But w when the debate came, I noticed all his chat. The pre-debate chat just turned in. It was all gone. He was so boring to talk to. To talk to, he's actually very <laughs> boring. I mean, I wouldn't want to be in a room with him having a conversation because he's so bland. Did you see his socially awkward joke about we are men? Yeah, we make babies. Yeah, what? I was like, I was like ah. that, yeah, that's, that's, that's very <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> Diana, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> I was like, I was like, bro, don't make the. He actually tried to. Be funny once as well. Someone sent me a clip because a lot of people were sending me clips just to tell me what kind of because I never watched him. I never found him impressive. Um, I saw his one conversation on secular jihadists, but um, he he once uh, he he was asking this guy, "Oh, do you even lift, bro?" He tried to make that joke, you know, like, "Do you even lift?" Not to me, to some person on it on his channel. It's like, man, this is this, this such a cool joke, but it just doesn't work when it comes out of your mouth because it's so <laughs> socially awkward. And yeah. that's what I, that that okay. With that blame, solely can't go to Islam because he he, he that's just him. Just yeah, 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 um, yeah. Well, um, I want to show this thing just so just to bring that out again. Uh, we I we are never exaggerating here. I promise that to you, <laughs> uh, Daniel Hikikachu. Let's see. Where's that video? I can't find the screenshot that I actually took from him making those jokes on uh, Twitter, but I will quickly bring it up here. Have it ready so everybody can see that once more and see what kind of a person we are dealing with. Oh, yeah, it's right here. So here he said the following. 
Where is that? Here. Here he said, Hi. Daniel Kikichu on Twitter, uh, May 19th, 2020, he said, Oh man, I missed the International Day Against Homophobia. The best way to celebrate such a beautiful, momentous, important day is the Muslim way, recreational base jumping. Yeah recreational base jumping and uh and he makes a joke he's basically saying that you know throw throw them off rooftops um so, so some muslim brother here who was his cheerleader saying oh no no islam doesn't allow throwing homosexuals at the roof this is what i'm saying the guy you want to follow at least know what he believes in mm -hmm. this is this is what he believes in so uh, wh why are you so are you you know i actually wanted to ask you this question what do you think that these people who uh the, the, these muslims were all cheerleading uh, you actually mentioned that in your twitter or something i've been contacted by three people also that oh look Harris, this is not true islam you know uh, if you want to have a chat this is not the right way blood why do you engage these people blah blah this i say why don't you say it publicly i said don't tell me that again same thing that you told me. I said, why don't you say that publicly? Yeah. Oh, publicly, all you guys are putting this brave front on that everyone is with behind Hakikachu. But when we tackle you guys individually, you say, no, Islam doesn't allow wife beating. No, 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 slavery was uh, periodical. It, it, it doesn't apply today. Then why are you and your followers going for him? Mm -hmm. um, so you know, why do you think that is? Is it, is it because, I, as I said in my opening statement, I said, they have to say this whether they agree with him or not they have to say that we uh or oh, hakikachu won hakikachu did this or that so they can keep their faith intact do you think it's just that uh, or they or, or they just genuinely hate so much that no matter wh what he does even he, he, you know like even if he passes wind or something they're gonna say wow what a beautiful fragrance what what do you think <laughs> what, do you, what what is your opinion then why do so many people just and you know there's so many fake people and it's like i they, they try to say that oh you know you lost which i don't care you know like again i'm saying that again if you think i lost please let me be, beat me again i want to i want to be beaten again what, what do you think what's your opinion i mean his, his audience people like him uh people who follow people like him don't care really about facts they don't care about who made a better point they don't care about you know what is good for you what is bad for you what they care about is is, is reaffirming their uh their beliefs and their uh, you know, extreme views on society, their hate against uh, the disbelievers in the world and all that. It, it, anything could be done, anything could be said, no matter how the debate goes, no matter uh, how superior you see, no matter if he presents facts or fiction, the people that are on his side will make sure that everybody knows that he won. They did the same thing. I mean, they watched the stream on his channel, right? Yeah, they yeah. mostly were on his channel. After the stream was over, they immediately moved over to modern day debate, uh, you know, where the actual stream took place. And they started spamming the comment section full of the same stuff that they uh, wrote on Daniel Kikachu's page. My channel. And then, and then they came to your channel and also started spamming your channel entirely. On top of that, not only did they spam, uh, did they engage in, in opinion and manipulation that way, they also created fake accounts that looked like me and looked like supporters of you, in which uh, they say stuff yeah. like, wow, I'm really embarrassed. Wow, you really won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you, if you check the profile, you see the comment history and you see that they are clearly Muslims, you know? And yeah, yeah, yeah. They created fake posts everywhere. I mean, these are people who are not, they don't care about truth. They don't care about exactly. you know, who, who is who is making more sense. They don't care about learning more. What they care about is from the very beginning, before the debate even starts, about humiliating, destroying, killing the opponent. And that's what they are on about. Look at this. So, so look at the likes and dislikes, 20, 28,000 views. Like when the stream ended, it was fine. But then afterwards, that's what happened. There was this attack uh by all these um you know the the the, the, the most of them are muslims um yeah, yeah. and 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 uh just attack uh, the so they flooded the they bombarded someone told me that what's that guy's name freed uh Zak no, not zakaria sorry the freed responds or something someone was telling me that he actually said the go to his channel which uh some people Actually, not just more than one people told me that. And then um, uh, then he apparently responded. He said he didn't say anything. So I actually don't know. I haven't been able to confirm it. But these guys must have come from somewhere. But they need that 
reconfirmation somehow that they need, you know, like oh, our faith is restored. Whether they agree with him or not, this is the same thing. Like his Pikachu fanboy here was saying that, oh, no, you're not supposed to be throwing homosexuals at rooftops. So why are you supporting him? Because he does believe in that. He does believe in that. I, I don't understand. What, what are you guys defending? I mean, you, you guys who come here and who say, yes, Daniel Hikikachu won, our brother smashed you. Humiliate. You say these things, what exactly did he win about? If you don't even know what your guy believes in, what he openly argued for, then what exactly did he win? <laughs> I, I, I Again, I would go back to it. And, and, and also those people, like people who in between who genuinely want to understand that, who, are, who genuinely want to learn. And this, this is what's just like, I, I, this is my third or fourth debate with someone. But actually, properly, I think it's probably second or third debate. But I've always enjoyed conversations. And the reason for that is because I want to, I, I really want to get to the bottom of it. You know, like, I mean, one particular point, you can go back and forward, back, have a normal conversation. And you go, oh, okay, all right. And that's what you want. But this, but he doesn't want it. These guys don't want it. They want to go with a certain point and quickly, you know, just get away with it or go into it. They're about scoring points. They're not about having a meaningful conversation. Um, and, and that's why I think it's just uh, it's, it's, it's such a shame. I, I spoke with Uthman Badr, the guy, I think you spoke with him as well. That was more of a conversation. There was no moderator involved in that. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. look where we got somewhere. He ended up acknowledging evolution um, again, it was just like a respectable, respectful dialogue between the two of us. And there was no moderator. We spoke for like two and a half hours or something. Fine. Why do you need that? So uh, it, it's it, it's such a shame that these people just, uh, there's no education element of that. There's no learning element of, or making, just at least understand my argument and then debunk it. You don't even understand my argument. Well, forget about understanding my argument. You don't even understand your own guy's argument. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, let me put here. Let me put something on the screen here quickly, just because I find it so funny. And uh, this is where it's, he starts escalating. Mm -hmm. I think apostate prophet says for Daniel, <laughs> if he wants to force Islam execute apostates and enslave disbelievers, would it be okay to do the same to Muslims and Muslim converts? If not, why not? Please answer the question. Would it be no? Why would I want people to be? the people who stand for truth and justice and righteousness to be enslaved. Why? Like, just because you accept that uh, warfare is necessary and slavery is necessary doesn't mean that you yourself are fine with being defeated in war. I can, I, I can ask anyone that question. Like, do you think war is necessary? And then you say, yes, war is necessary. Okay, so you're fine with being defeated in war. You're you're fine with being blown up. That's not, question. That, that's not the point, idiot. That's the the, the question, point yeah. the point is not, are you okay with that being the point is not do you want that to be done to you? The point is would it be okay as yeah. a method? You idiot. Because every <laughs> side, yeah. every side believes he's right. Crusaders, Christians believe they were right, Muslims believe they were on the right. So, uh, I mean, I, I really don't want to be insulting. You know, I really don't want to say this. But stupid. this guy, this guy has been so arrogant, has been so aggressive, has been so hostile, dehumanizing, stupid. and all that. And then he sits here and says this. I mean, you, you, you absolute idiot. The point here is not do you want your own people to be enslaved. The point here is is that okay as a method if it were done to your own people? You know, it, it, it's you know, it, it's it's not about whether you want it to be done to your own people. The, the comparison to being defeated also doesn't make sense. You believe it is okay to wage war and yeah. to to win. You def, you believe that it's okay to be defeated or you know for the other side who loses. So do you also believe that a method like enslaving the other side is okay when it is done to Muslims as a result of a war? You dumbass. <laughs> but that, let's that, go. That, yeah, but that, that's how she, yeah, it's, what's the logic of that? It doesn't make sense. Yes, sometimes war is necessary. I explained how sometimes slavery is necessary, sex slavery is necessary. Do I want that to happen to me? No, I don't want to die in a war. I don't want to be enslaved, obviously. But that doesn't, that's some not some kind of hypocrisy. Like Apus, here, I'll talk about Apus. Like he is just a con man. He has to lie, like just like Harris, to his Hindu, yeah. Hindutva audience, his Christian <laughs> loser audience, who are uh, <laughs> not able to actually think for themselves they just follow this content. conspiracy follow theory this isn't this so ironic that he says that we have audiences that can't think for themselves that just follow people 
it, it's, it's again, and and this is how little he knows that I actually the one of the reasons that why I didn't grow because I, I do my streams in Urdu as well, and a lot of Indians listen to me, and I only appeal, I only try to reach out to the secular-minded Indians so much so, and you're probably a little bit familiar with that. We don't want to go, uh, uh, you know, touch that bees nest, but um, uh, but when you made one one of the videos, so how you get? So I have been absorbing that attack from the hindutva that he mentioned for over two years now and it, it was really turned up in the last six months or so because i am a secular minded human rights person who doesn't discriminate between muslims or hindus or christians wherever the human rights are are being attacked i would defend them i spend a lot of time defending human rights of muslims in india so as a result the hindutva attacks me i even showed one of the uh, the the, the uh, st uh, analytics uh, uh, one of the graphics where it actually showed how I made a video a couple of videos I, I put an attack on Hindutva people not Indians Hindutva and I I lost like my subscriber count went down like that I've been picking fights unnecessarily um, if I was a con man as he claims but he doesn't know that he these guys are just dis either dishonest or ignorant either yeah, way you yeah. shouldn't be following them. And it's, it's and it's completely irrelevant to the whole point. He's just now getting angry and trying to you know do bring up irrelevant insults here. Um, all of these bad insults have been addressed. All of these points have been addressed in our debate I had with Apus. But he's such a crybaby loser that he has to hijack this debate. <laughs> right, we, we and Harris is such a and Harris is such a cuck that he allows <laughs> Apus to hijack his stage and his spotlight. Doesn't must, that make you feel like a loser, please, Harris? Doesn't that yeah, make you feel you're like you're diving the wedges? That your big daddy Apus, your big daddy skills are good. Your big daddy Apus, your big daddy Apus is taking it was your spotlight. Are you are you Daniel, second fiddle to Apus, Harris? <laughs> Daniel, answer, Daniel, answer that always, question. Because you're not getting any questions from the audience. No one this, cares about. This, yeah, yeah, exactly. We must go. We because go my go position is so sensible. Are you like whatever you ask, you ask, if you ask, if you ask, if you ask Harris a good question, you gotta come on. Can't respond. Are you? On, are you still a schoolboy cup? <laughs> I'm wondering. Okay. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 what was my response? I want to hear my response. I forgot. Look, whatever oh, kind of fantasy you're, you're imagining, I can I can go into that. No, hang on, I'm gonna respond to that. I, whatever whatever is going through your mind and your manly man. Right? That's fine with me. But my strategy was always to let you speak more. You defending slavery, sex slavery. You, we didn't even touch torture because you, you would defend torture as well. Wife beating. You've defended that. I don't have to say anything. Let the world see for itself because right now your own fellow Muslims, they're actually like this. They're like, oh, geez, he did not say that. But you did say that. So this is why that's perfectly fine. You know why people are not asking me any questions? Because my 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 positions are very sensible. They're, they're very rational. They're like, OK, that's fine. Your case is not so much. You're just defending <laughs> what everyone already has been indoctrinated with. So yeah, I indoctrinated. Imagine the words that the, 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 you the, the, the irony here. You have been indoctrinated. Irony. I mean, I, we, we are indoctrinated with be compassionate. I mean, even if it's indoctrination, that's a very good indoctrination to have because I would want someone to be compassionate towards me, even in war. I would want if I'm if I'm fighting a war and I'm and I'm killed, I would not want them to treat the women or uh, children that I love and care about to treat them as animals or slaves or sex slaves. Hakikachu's worldview is like. Yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. You, you, you don't want to know you don't uh, <laughs> you you would you would literally this is again an, another analogy from similarity between stalin and muhammad and this is his ideology uh, whose ideology he follows when german women were being raped there were so many women who were actually cutting up their faces some even killed themselves because they did not want to be raped by them by the red army soldiers um and his worldview is so barbaric that that's what he would push women to towards. So, um, he, but he defends it. If he could just say, "I would have had respect," and which, which again, I was totally blindsided. I actually thought that he was saying slavery is not justifiable in this day and age. But thank you, you picked it up. I didn't pick it up. I actually thought that he actually threw, uh, you know, threw, threw some dust in my eyes. 
It, it's it's very funny. He's like um, he is talking about, and he did talk about before the debate about how uh, you murtad ex-Muslim will get emotional and start crying and this and that. And here on this footage, we very clearly see that you are just completely calm and uh, cheerful, and he's just so losing it. He's having a meltdown, attacking you, attacking the moderator, and start uh, trying to argue with him and speaking over him, uh, calling you a cuck because I, apparently I'm stealing your show and I'm your daddy. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff that he cares about. <laughs> Calling you a schoolboy cuck. This stuff yeah. that, you know, these edgy 12-year-olds on the internet say. I mean, this is the stuff that he cares about. Here you see his his sentiments. He doesn't care about truth. What he cares about is to just assert how manly he is and how strong he is. And, you know, he will leave a name. He will be strong and he will humiliate and this and that. And you are just uh, not as strong and you're not just, you're not, you're not humiliating him. You're not being a very strong man and that that's what matters to him but, but it's funny up until that point i mean he hadn't thrown any funny insult at me you know up until that point it, it, but but it's so funny i think he must have played it was must have played been playing at the back of his mind uh because you know I, oh but like as i said my jokes were harmless like i, I didn't i didn't mean anything I, they, were, they were just like in the spur of the moment they were just funny just to lighten the mood yeah are you a cuck? <laughs> arguments, bringing evidence, like citing Ackerman. Right, citing Ackerman. 1400 years old. 1400 year old, 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 year old ideas. No, 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 We've got so many questions. I hate to do this. The Super Destroyer says, A. Put Scott. Go. Did he say April? <laughs> Someone made a super chat uh, talking to me. It's so funny how the super chat suddenly <laughs> is addressed to me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then he, I know there was this one part where he uh, pulled out a Pikachu that his wife just uh, brought him. Uh, you know, where he, when he brought out that Pikachu and said, would oh, it yeah, yeah. have this? And yeah, whatever. So it was, it was a bunch but of. Him, that was, well, again, was that his. Like, I, I was again lost a little bit of that. I was like, are you trying to be cool or something it's so socially awkward it's like mate that belongs to your kids what, what are you trying to what are you trying yeah. to say that that doesn't make you look cool or or non-sadistic or unsadistic it doesn't make you look anything like that you're, you're still a crazy mf <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah he was he was trying to make the point that he's actually a very compassionate guy who even has a Pikachu at Pikachu. home. Something <laughs> something that rhymes with his name. Yeah. Hakika, hakikat means reality and Hakika Jew. I think he's a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> it's Hakika Jew is like truth, third truth, something. True, true G. No, Hakikat means reality. So he's a real in reality, mm -hmm. he's a Jew. That's what it means. Hakika Jew. <laughs> an interesting person. And I and I still put my faith in humanity. And I know even most Muslims because I've but, seen but that. Yeah. I've seen my it Pakistani society. So would would a sadist have this? Do it. Would well, that's your kids. <laughs> that belongs to your kids. So, Pikachu. Okay, you know, so, no. Don't you want to call me Pikachu yeah. again? No, I don't want to. This is Pikachu. Uh, what is this? A lot, lot, lot of people have Am told I, you that. Would a sadist have uh, Pikachu right here? Oh, Pikachu like endorses we must me. We must Pikachu, do level. you want Sharia? Yes, yes, I want Sharia. A prophet what the hell says, you will be turned off we, the rooftop. All right, we'll talk to Pikachu later. <laughs> yes, does, they I say, want, does is Daniel, Harris a con? Get, con said, man? Yes, he is. Does Daniel believe <laughs> that execute? Oh, that's, that's... Yeah. So, anyway, th that that, that, that <laughs> there are some funny moments at the end. I think at that point, tough guy, tough guy, Pikachu. <laughs> anyway, I, th I, th I reckon so, guys. Please, as I said, uh, I know I'm saying it again and again. Please follow, please subscribe to my channel. Um, just search Harris Sultan, you'll find it. Uh, there, there are a lot of clips that are going to be coming up that's going to be very interesting. The plan was always to get him to say these things, as it is quite evident, people who are going for him even now don't know what he stands for. He posted the slavery question uh his point his belief on slavery so craftily that even i fell for it i thought that he is no longer in favor of the slavery as we knew it uh but no he actually changed his words in a way that he is people who so so he doesn't get in trouble with his uh with his real fan base who know slavery can't be condemned he didn't even condemn it but he actually kind of posed it like you know slavery uh, has been uh, abolished by the modern weaponry, not because of the circumstances, uh, not, not because of the changing morality, and it should be, it should no longer be applied in this day and age. He didn't say that, but I, I fell for it. 
So how could he? How could this surface level Hakikachu fanboys wouldn't fall for it? So I'm actually interested to see how other honest Islamic scholars respond to that, or are they gonna sing to the choir as well? And they're just gonna say, "Well, yeah, Hakikachu won. Hakikachu won." The benchmark would always be this: Are you convinced by his arguments or not? If you're not convinced by his argument, i.e. women should be beaten up, wives should, can be beaten up, nine-year-olds can be married uh, to, um, and torture is fine, sex slavery is fine. If you're not convinced by his arguments, then he lost. Then you're on my side because I am saying the same thing. Then you're on my side. You are already on my side. So why are you going for it? That would always be the benchmark. So just remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I just uh, noticed that I completely forgot to read the super chats. Uh, mm -hmm. I know you have to go; it's very late. Uh, I will not. Re I will not make a question and answer session, but I will want to uh, read For them sure. all. I'm, just I'm, so, I'm here with you. That's just so, we, just so we can go through them, just so we don't have to miss them. But before that, I want to actually make two uh, two challenges uh, before this uh, you know gets lost. I want to make two challenges. One of them is to Daniel Hikikichu, and one of them is to uh, Muslim apologists, including people like uh, Farid and all that. But uh, the first challenge is, I made this challenge before to Daniel Hikikichu. Daniel, you say that you have debated me. We have not debated. Otherwise, uh, I would have actually you know, done a, done a debate with a system, with a moderator, with opening speeches, times, time limits, and this and that. Um, if you truly think that uh, you and I would have a debate and that you would be, you know, proving such great stuff to the world, uh, I am willing to accept to have a debate with you. Although I don't like to have a debate on the topic, uh, you know, Sharia law, because I think it's a very useless debate to have for me personally. I would prefer having a debate on is Islam true or or Let's turn it around. I will argue Islam is false. Is Islam false? I'm ready and willing to have that debate with you immediately. Uh, if you think that, that you are too weak to argue with theology and uh, you know knowledge, I, I, I understand that you are not uh, very smart in that regard. I would uh, also challenge you to have a debate with me on uh, Sharia law and on pragmatism, human civilization, you know, pragmatism, human rights, whatever you want to call it. You are against these things anyway, openly. So uh, what does it matter? So the other challenge is uh, I want to challenge Muslim apologists like Farid, um, Sheikh Uthman, I don't know, Hamza, all these people out there who all sure know about the debate that happened yesterday, or was it two days ago, uh, who sure know about this debate. I want to ask them to comment on this, and I ask them if they agree with Daniel Kikichu that child yeah. marriage is healthy and wholesome and good, if sex slavery is morally necessary and acceptable, if slavery is completely justifiable in the present and the future, if uh, Wife beating is entirely uh, good. It's it's a it's a beautiful practice. If marital rape is a beautiful practice, uh, if we should execute homosexuals as Daniel Kikichu proposes, if we should execute apostates, and so on. Dear Muslim apologists, uh, please don't hide. In this case, we have all seen what has been said. We will all keep exposing these things. Please share your opinion with us. I'm sure all the uh, Muslim followers who look up to you will be. Uh, awaiting your uh, opinions on all this that is those are my two challenges i hope it's quite clear um if you don't want to say anything else i will quickly go through the super chats and then we will have to quit no i think uh i, I, I had something i forgot but anyway i think you should start with the super chats. it's, it's fine it's it's fine it's, <laughs> uh i think this was a very good stream on yeah it was in many regards okay so i said i will not be able to uh, respond to all the questions we have very limited time but i will go through all of them because i don't want to disrespect all the people who have made super chats i'm very sorry i completely forgot but myth vision podcast said i'm here to laugh uh, thank you myth vision everyone subscribe to myth vision podcast by the way it's uh, amazing he's doing great work recently began uh, tackling the whole islam issue abdullah samir is here hello abdullah samir nice to see you here said daniel wants to show islam is superior not make people like it i agree stop scamming men said while i agree that in the west far too many are isolated dying alone and family can be undervalued i would literally wish no one had kids if they were in any danger of one day burning in hell forever 
I don't want to add anything to that opinion. <laughs> uh, Iskander Ibn, Ibn Yaqub al Corona or something said, may peace be upon us. K keep it going. Cheers from the Netherlands. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Abdullah Samir said, Daniel's arguments give incel vibes. Islam appeals to incels and insecure men. Uh, Can I comment on that? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. V very quickly, because it, it, it actually does make a lot of sense. Like if you see all these guys who actually propagate Islam to the... To, to this extreme core they're socially awkward look uh -huh. at all these guys they've got some sort of an issue and and i'll tell you how islam actually or these so-called their version of family values how it actually supports them is because in the west we have these socially awkward guys as well but they don't have arranged marriages so they end up becoming incels and now we're seeing this new phenomena of incel violence so in these uh, and there's a very common funny joke all the people from india and pakistan would know that they say well if you if you're socially awkward you don't look so good you don't have a good job doesn't matter there will always be a cousin available for you <laughs> so <laughs> so they will they will they will hook you up with a cousin um, regardless of your standing. Whereas in the Western world, in the free world, a guy has to go and, you know, like there's a, there's a natural packing order. Like the most successful guy will end up getting the most prettiest girl or whatever. So that it, it works on that way. But in this case, and people who miss out, it's not. So yeah, Islam does appeal to, uh, in its extreme form, it appeals to incels as well. So it, mm -hmm, yeah, that mm -hmm, makes mm -hmm, sense. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I also think there's a lot of hate for the world involved in this uh, in this case and for a supposed perceived cosmic injustice that people like Daniel Kikuchi want to solve in very terrible ways by inflicting violence upon the world. But yeah, um, Leptoceratops said, Leptoceratops said, Daniel Kikuchi is a stereotypical Reddit neckbeard who loves tendies. <laughs> Thank you so much. Arif Hussein Ter Ter Teruvat said, good to see you together. Great going. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Zagros Oskan, we read that earlier. I think DH is super smart or and good acting atheist disguised as a Muslim to expose how awful Islam truly is, or he's just the dumbest Muslim there is who totally missed the point of doing takia. To be free made a super sticker. I actually want to say something. I wanted to make a brief video earlier. Harris, I'm sure you have uh, heard of the whole sentiment when you were a Muslim. I'm sure you're familiar with it, this whole uh, Muslim conspiracy theory idea that uh, some radical Muslims are just, you know, paid agents to make yeah, Islam yeah. look bad. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I never I never believed in that stuff when I was a Muslim myself, but uh, with everything... <laughs> With everything that Daniel Kikichu has done during this debate and with everything that came forth from that, I feel like, dude, I mean, I, I, it, it's, it looks realistic. Maybe Daniel Hikikichu is actually a paid agent by the by some secret <laughs> agencies to make Islam look bad. You know? But you know, AP, this is so similar. <laughs> yeah, I've heard I've heard of this, but this is this sentiment is so similar in every culture because I know Indian culture very well as well now because of my channel and my and the, how I talk. There was this woman who came to my channel and she said, like, because I post some Hindutva violent videos as well, and I could comment on that. So there was this woman, she came on my channel and she said, Harris, how do you know this, this extreme radical Hindutva are not actually Pakistan's ISI agents? Yeah. So I was like, so you, are you saying that these videos in Mumbai are being filmed by actors, sponsored, produced by Pakistan? She was like, yeah, it could be possible. So which yeah, is the same kind stupid. of sentiment. <laughs> yeah, so it's the same sentiment that radical Muslims, these so-called radical Muslims fundamentalists are out there to disrepute, bring Islam into dis disrepute. Um, but which is no, I mean, they, you have to understand because they're not willing to agree. They're not willing to understand that Islam is such a bad ideology that anyone can twist and turn it. It's like mm -hmm. a, it's like, it's like a nose of wax. You could just turn it any which way you want. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, Stop scamming man said apologists poorly portray historical life expectancy in relation to child marriage. Life expectancy was higher if you discount those that died under five. Uh, for example, James I. Kidd's life, ex uh, life expectancy 19, life expectancy discounting under five's death 43. I think Aisha herself uh, lived quite a long life, didn't she? She, she lived up to 80, but I think the, the it's infant mortality was bringing it down usually. It's the infant yeah. mortality, mortality is like a lot of kids would actually die. One in one in yeah. three or four would die. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so that, 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 yeah. No, no, no one in three or four. Like I think one would reach the uh, adulthood 
um, one in five or something like that. So uh -huh. that's why a lot of them used to have a lot of kids. So this whole fertility argument, why people had this tendency to make more babies was because of that. It's like all the other animals, they produce lots of babies, as many as they can every year, mating season. They just make it because they don't reach the adult life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, uh, let's move on. I have to go. I have very limited time. Uh, Zagros Oskan said, oh, you divine and all-knowing apostate prophet. Here's my jizya. Please don't kill me. Thank you. I appreciate it. Eunice Lasfar made a super chat, didn't say anything. Nirdar Pernikar said, uh, Pikachu is my favorite Pokemon. Please don't call him that. That's a disrespect of Pikachu. Uh, Yuri Ngadarian said, uh, thank you. Since the Quran asserts that it is the last revelation, its unchanging misogynistic edicts are forever tethered to antiquity. Rationality rules. Oh, he said that? He did say that? That's very nice. Um, Ipixel Kitty said, thank you so much. She is too young, Muhammad, when Omar and Abu Bakr wanted to marry his daughter, Fatima, who was nine at the time. Did he say that? Remember. I remember him saying, uh, making a remark about, uh, I think about when Ali wanted to um, to marry an, another woman, or I think he made a remark about how he doesn't want uh, his daughter to be a yeah, 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 yeah. He did say like that. that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We actually spoke about this today. Yeah, yeah, that, that was the incident. So he actually, Abu Bakr and Umar both wanted to marry Fatima, and Muhammad said, no, they're too, you, they, she has to marry someone closer to her age. Oh, and okay. then, yeah, and then he married Ali because he was, uh, he, he was the same age. So, okay. and there's another incident, Muhammad is such a hypocrite that when Ali wanted the second wife. Have you heard of this one? When he wanted uh -huh. the second wife. That's um, what I was referring Muhammad, to. Yeah. yeah, Muhammad said, no, that would hurt Fatima. And anyone who hurts Fatima hurts me. Like, see how emotional blackmailing. I mean, it has. And then on the other hand, he's telling people that even if my daughter had committed uh, theft, then I would have chopped her hands off. That's <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Hindu historian made a super chat and said, first rule of science, correlation does not equal causation. Yeah, I think that was in reference to something that, uh, how Daniel think you get your place with statistics. Someone even in the super chat during the debate brought it up and said, hey, how do your statistics actually relate to your argument? And he tried to make the connection, but he does actually do that. He, As soon as two numbers seem to go together, he tries to connect them and tries to treat them as, uh, you know, cause and effect. But that's one of the major fallacies that, commit, that, he, that he constantly commits during his uh, speeches, and I really want to address that at some point. Uh, Chorleif Murray says, I live in the Mecca of Mormonism, Utah, and this sadly reminds me of Joseph Smith. Stay away from Mormonism, stay away from Islam. I very much agree to a certain extent. Uh, Stop scamming man said, Daniel H. Pik Pikachu is shocking. <laughs> Ruben is my name said if Daniel H agrees to keep punishments within the family I wonder if he would uh, be okay with the wife beating the husband up for for example cheating yeah um, that's a whole issue that we should get into sometime Maxon H Din said Harris Pikachu is better than you he knows how to sell shit as pudding <laughs> Yeah, so there you, there you got it. Daryl Duckworth said, thanks. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yurian Guderian said, when Islam gets you down, you just got to listen to some Michael Jackson. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Ipixel Kitty said, imagine if one of the women was his sister. What's that in reference to? It might have been reference to sex slavery we were talking about. Oh, oh, boy. Yeah. Where Danny the Kikichu completely cut or the prob or probably coitus, Or probably coitus interruptus. Maybe, maybe both at the same time. I don't know. Bruce Wayne said, so what happens to the predestined soul if you actually pull out? How does the soul exist in a body if you never impregnate them? Well, if you did do that, it would technically not be predestined. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, Magnus Holmgren said, thank you so much. Muslims never admit that Islam causes conflict and hardship, it seems. They always blame past European colonialism and current American imperialism. You know what's so funny? Uh, how he argues that this uh, Islamic patriarchal system makes for a strong, wealthy, amazing society. But then in the next moment, when you talk about how horrible the Muslim countries are, he will say, well, it's all because of the because of the West. You know, the advanced, strong West is keeping the Muslim countries, you know, weak and oppressed and this and that. I mean, 
to it, agree on something. How do you, <laughs> does Islam make you strong or not? You know, why are you why are you complaining about being oppressed the entire time? Reason on Faith said most moderate Muslims will dismiss Daniel's defense of wife beating, the fertility argument, child marriage, etc. What needs discussion next is the points on preserving family, society, etc. Thank you so much, Reason on Faith. Uh, James is tired, said great questions, AP. Thank you for asking them. Thank you so much. I Pixel Kitty said he only rediscovered Islam because his sister got sexually assaulted and murdered by a Westerner and he blamed it on their Western lifestyle. What if his sister was being taken as a sex slave by a Muslim? Okay, yeah, I don't want to go personally into that whole matter. I guess some people kind of learned meanwhile that Hadjan Hikikichu went through some family trauma in his past, which also kind of explains uh, problems that he has currently with the justice system and the world but i don't want to get into that at the moment right yeah yeah you yeah. know no point in getting into it but again the whole point of us giving out hypotheticals when we talk about that and, and you, you can replace that with my sister like i've always said it so let's not go there because like i how would i feel if my sister was raped or murdered or if my sister was taken as a sex slave by someone obviously you know like this is the utter humiliation for a for a man for not to be able to protect his loved ones the, mm -hmm. the, the, that that's that's just natural um but there's an ideology and this is why we have human rights that he hates so much human rights ensure that that those kind of things don't happen they still happen but at least they're not legitimized islam legitimizes it and this mm -hmm. guy endorses it that, that's just I, I this is why i brought it up i said how would you feel if my soldiers come to me and tell me uh con, you know general sultan we've got this abdul's wife and his sister or whatever uh, should we put put it in or pull it out that that's just you some people might say like oh you're being so crude harris but it it it, it, it is important to visualize it these guys are literally saying it yeah, there is a thing uh, I mean, in psychology, uh, the whole issue of resentment. If you experience some very traumatic thing in life, some great injustice to yourself or to loved ones, mm -hmm. and uh, you first try to bring justice to it by appealing to you know authorities, to the people in charge, to the rules, mm -hmm. you hope that the situation will get solved, but it doesn't get solved. You appeal again, it doesn't get solved. You appeal again, it gets even worse. You start getting uh, bad reactions. Uh, as a result, this whole this, this whole issue this failure of the justice system this failure to receive justice for some great injustice that has happened in your family or to yourself or to your loved ones uh makes you severely disappointed in the justice system and in the justice of the world makes you resentful makes you uh traumatic which can easily evolve into uh hate you know, against humanity, against the world. Uh, I just lost Harris. I don't know why. <laughs> but yeah, that's what happens. Um, oh, he's back. Here, Harris, you just dropped. Did yeah. you just kick yourself up by mistake? I don't know. Um, Reox9 made a super chat and didn't say anything. Uh, Siraj, but thank you so much. I appreciate it. Siraj Kamal made a super chat, said, Apostate Prophet, I support your work. I am one of the founders of ex Muslim movement. Uh, you're doing great work, Harris and AP. Thank you so much. I guess forerunners, one of the people who were around forever. I don't know, but I appreciate it. Very nice. Thank you. Now Devoted said, good debate, Harris Sultan. I have not finished it yet. Uh, Abdul Elm said, if Islam is really like what Daniel said, then I would not think twice denouncing Islam. I would definitely research. AP, I have become your fan after this. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And... Yeah, I think the whole debate with Daniel Kikichu has said the strength in what in this debate is that uh, people who did not know before about what Islam is will be exposed to how terrible Islam is and will think about this once more. Those who are within Islam who don't like this terrible aspect of Islam will be exposed to it once more and will think about leaving Islam. Those who are ter who are accepting of very terrible elements within Islam, the kind of stuff that, that uh, Daniel Hikikuchu defends, they will have their faith in terrible things reaffirmed, but that's just part of the deal. And I just hope that this has helped everyone see more and more what kind of 
disgusting, uh, what kind of a disgusting ideology we are dealing with. This has helped more people understand that people like Harris and I are not lying about Islam. We are merely presenting the truth. And I'm really glad that Dan Hikichu has uh, done our job for us and has become a better uh, representative of exposing Islam than I have been. And I really appreciate that. Harris, is there anything else you want to add? No, not on that. Uh, I, I I don't have as many super chats as you do, so I, I would quickly want to go through them. There's, there's oh, not yeah. that many. Sure, yeah. Um, uh, let me go through it. Yes, I'm not as popular as you, so very quickly. AMP said, likely that Pikachu's a concubine. I don't know what's the reference to. Daniel's been crying on his life for nearly six hours straight, and he's still going, have mercy, Sultan. Really? I actually didn't know that, right? Uh, six, <laughs> yeah, I, I know that he had his stream on, but I don't know, he's, been, he's still going. So, uh, Denver Johnson saying, I wouldn't be surprised if Daniel is on FBI's radar. Why do you think, why, why are these guys not... Uh, they might have a radar, but they can't actually do anything. You live in America. So, I mean, it's sure, I mean if someone... I would be, isn't there, isn't there, like, I, I know that people should be, con uh, I've seen that in the news a lot, like people who's watching child pornography or something, so just something like that. They get raided by the police and all of that, and then, and, and then they get caught out. But here, I know it's not similar in a sense that you're not literally watching it, but you're talking about it in a sense you're justifying it. So it might not get picked up by the system, but individuals looking at it, why doesn't it get pro problematic? Because Ali Dava said, oh, I would marry my nine-year-old girl to a 50-year-old man. He said it. Mm -hmm. We've got the clip. I put it up. How come the authorities don't actually... Well, you have the UK, uh, which is a joke. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> where Ali Dawa is and where Muhammad Hijab are. Uh, double standards. I don't even want to say more about that stuff. But uh, I, I think when it comes to Daniel Hikikichu, I, I am pretty sure, as far as I know, how the how the how the FBI works. Uh, there are some authorities, you know, watching Daniel Hikikichu already. The issue is that um, I mean, it's it's the rule of law. He has not really necessarily done something that is. Uh, you know, you punishable said, under uh, no, the U.S. Yeah. law, but they would be waiting for people like him to uh, to to say something that has immediate consequences that lead to something criminal and harmful, or they would wait for him to say something that really uh, you know speaks intention that really presents intentions of committing a crime, and I don't know. Well, uh, they think this debate was about winning or losing. The more that Westerners learn about Islam, the faster it will crumble by exposing itself. Yes, and not only just Westerners, but also moderate Muslims as well. And I've got uh, some people now commenting, some Muslim scholars have actually come out a little bit in my support in a way, not necessarily in my support, but against Daniel Kikaj. I'll just quickly share that with you after a moment as well. Denver, Denver Johnson said, do you know that Daniel went to South Africa and got completely slaughtered by Asadullah Ali and the Lucy for his factual errors and lack of knowledge? I actually don't know about this. In South Africa? Why did he go to South Africa? What is Asadullah and the Lucy doing over there? I actually have no idea what this is. And Mr. Has, do you plan to live in Botswana? Don Singer is asking. Um, I actually did answer that. Why would I go to Botswana if there's no uh, economic progress? That was such a stupid argument. Did you actually understand that? What was he actually trying to say? He was saying that Botswana has the same human... First of all, Botswana doesn't even have the same human rights as, let's say, Australia, for example. You know, I'm sure there's a, it's a third world country. It, there, there are a lot of corrupt police. It's not the same. But even let's just say if it was, it had the same human rights standards as Australia does, then why would I go to a country where there's so much, where, where, where GDP is touching my shoes? Why, why, why would I do that? So obviously it's not just about human rights. What was the argument there? Did you get that? He, he was completely strawmanning you. He actually uh, kind of spoke in your name and said that you are blaming all the problems that these countries have on Islam, which you never did. So I never that, did? That was his premise. He said that you are blaming all the problems on Islam, but, uh, you know, Botswana has all these human rights and secularism and this and that, but they're doing very poorly. So why don't you go to Botswana? Huh? Why don't you go? <laughs> He's so dumb. That's, that's, a, that's <laughs> a stupid... I never... I, I, I am a strong modernist, in a, not postmodernist. I'm a strong modernist. I shit on even cultures. I even said that primitive cultures need to be eradicated you know which you try to twist my word and said oh primitive people i said no no i didn't say primitive people i said primitive cultures but by that what i meant then bring them out into the 21st century i understand that living in australia i understand aboriginals and i know they're suffering and i know how difficult it is to 
pull to pull a, a people of certain culture out into our modern way of life. I know it's not that easy, but ideally that would be better. The people not living in jungles and people not dying of hepatitis or cleaning dirty water. It would be better if they can enjoy the same houses as we do. So that was my point. Anyway, let's just quickly get through with this one. Um, let me quickly say, uh, we say to him, hey, if the West is so evil, if it's so immoral, if it's so bad, so filthy, yeah. why don't you go and move to a Muslim country? You know, there, there are so many of them. You don't have to move to the ideal Muslim country. You can just move to any of them. I'm sure there are many available. There are many Muslim countries available that are much closer to Islam than America is and that have not been bombed or anything within the last 100 years. It's very obvious. Your response to that should not be something as stupid as, then why don't you move to Botswana. They also have secularism. <laughs> I, yeah, but in, in his case, it, that's a perfectly rational explanation because he longs to live in a Muslim country. I don't yeah. long to live in a third world country. Um, yeah, anyway. exactly. Daniel Johnson, I'm glad that Daniel Akikachu admitted his mindset. Most apologies dodge and play between the lines. At least he's clear about his stance. Props to him. I actually said that he's not actually as clear as he claims to be. Mr. Monster says he misunderstood what human rights really is. He kept his giving his wish, vision of what a future of everyone having their own right would look like. Very weird. Mr. Monster saying, I loved your interview yesterday. Too bad Pikachu doesn't really know what human rights are um, or is in that sense. Oh, okay. This is it. I think adding, we'll adding to that, he, it was so stupid that he actually argued that uh, his argument was basically, well, if you support human rights, then that means you support, uh, you know, Western liberalism in general, which means you also support uh, capital punishment for women for women who have committed crimes. What the hell are you talking? I, that, yeah, well, that, that one I refuted. <laughs> that straight away. I said we don't even ask for that. We don't even ask for torture, <sighs> beating up women. We, we we don't ask for that. So that's just uh, bullshit. Very quickly, let's just wrap it up on that and uh, and. Uh, want to share that so i actually tweeted that there's some people who are saying that i don't um there's three muslims scholars have contacted me so someone said that uh oh they are abu laith javed hashmi javad hashmi and khalil and dani and i was like okay well i'm, I'm not going to confirm or deny anything who who it is so he said so Jav, dr javad, javad hashmi who is a phd um, he's, a, he's, a, he's a PhD doctor. So he say, do you not find it interesting that Haris Sultan's Islam is the same as Daniel's? <laughs> Isn't that true? That's the whole freaking point. We are, Sal we are Salafi, aren't we? We are literalists, aren't we? We actually see Islam what it says. But Dr. Javad Hashmi, Khalil Andani, Mufti Abu Layth, these guys look at it differently. They give you the rosier version of that. So if you subscribe to the rosier version, you should be shitting on Daniel Hikikachu because him and I were on the same side in the way we're interested, the way we're interpreting the Quran. So I think um, that, that that's just another way. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah anyway, yeah. I think I'm done. If you have anything to say, let's wrap it up. Sarah Michael Ashraf said, Apostle Prophet, an ex Muslim turned Christian girl was stabbed to death in Sweden for her apostasy. I haven't heard of that. I haven't heard of that either. We will definitely talk about that. Yeah, obviously, well, whether you turn to Christian or not, whatever that is, you're a human. And that's yeah. the beauty of human rights. We look at every human equally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here, a small point again, I will keep pushing Daniel on that whole uh, moving to an Islamic country thing. He said he won't go because America makes Sharia countries unsafe, LOL. Well, I mean, I, I never said, Daniel, hey, you must move to, a, to an Islamic country. I'm saying, hey, if you're consistent with yourself, stop living in the most immoral nation that you think there is, which is America. Instead, move to some country that is much closer to your Islamic ideals than America. And there are so many options among them. It doesn't have to be the ideal Islamic state. It can be any Muslim country, any Islamic country. And there are so many of them which are not controlled and not bombed by America. I mean, it's it's so clear, just such a stupid excuse by him. Okay, all right. Um, thanks so much, everybody. Thank you for listening. Uh, thanks, everybody. I think this was uh, very wholesome, not as wholesome as uh, child marriage is, according to Daniel Kikichu. Uh, <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, that's what he said, wholesome. Uh, this was very nice. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope we will uh, go on with this. I will make a few more excerpts of this. My challenges still go out to Daniel Kikichu and to all the Muslim apologists. And uh, thanks, everybody for being here thank you so much harris for doing that debate and also for uh coming and talking here together go and subscribe to harris sultan's channel everybody uh it's been on the screen forever now uh go and subscribe <laughs> to his channel he's doing great work 
And anything else, Harris? No, that's it. Thank you very much for having me. And I think this is uh, it's been really fun last couple of days. Uh, yeah. And we're going to do more of that. I, I am willing to, I'm ready to do a lot more of these. You know, like I want to be defeated like this every day. So, <laughs> Hakikaju, please defeat me like this every day. Yeah, <laughs> you're yeah. going to turn off. Not only you're going to expose Islam to the Western world, non-Muslims, those hijabi white girls who say, hey, Islam is all beds and rainbows and butterflies. Not only just that you're going to expose it to, but also these modern progressive Muslims. When they wake up from this, hoo-ha, we got to go for our guy. When they wake up, when they see for it what it is, then they'll be like, damn it, maybe he's right. Maybe these ex-Muslims yeah. are right. They, they'll they'll go away from Mufti Abulaid. Mufti Abulaid kind of guys, I hate them because they're more difficult for us. They listen. There was this, literally there was this girl. She was listen, she started listening to me. She was Mufti Abulaid's regular, but then again, she she got sucked back into Mufti Abulaid's argument. So I was like, oh right, okay. But Hakika Jews people, once their mind flips, it's over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Very well put. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Harris, and everybody. Have a fantastic rest of the day and stay away from Islam. <laughs>